Fancy lad. Fancy lad. Fancy Podcast lad. Fancy lad. Fancy lad. Podcast. Gonna talk to my friends. Fancy gonna share a lad. thought. Gonna have a laugh. Fancy That's what I thought. Lad. Fancy lad. Fancy, Fancy lad. Podcast. Fancy lad. Fancy, Fancy lad. lad. Podcast. Uh, yeah. And we are back. Oh my goodness. Yes, we are back. My God. Mm-hmm. I can't say it enough. No. I've I tried. I know. I've been there. I know. It gets, it's a little annoying. Yeah. By day three, you're like, can you fucking stop? Like, I, you can literally say it as many times as you want. You're not going to, you know. you'll never be satiated. Yeah. And uh, I think it's just part of the human condition to just constantly want more, you know? Oh, absolutely. So I just have to say it once more mm-hmm. and be satisfied with that. Just knowing that this is the last one. For this episode. Right. We are back. Right, and we are back on the Fancy Lad Podcast. That's right. Mm-hmm. In the Fancy Lad Podcast studio. That's right. We we got out of that jungle. Mm-hmm. We said, you know what? No more of this. I know, but you know what? I kind of miss it. Mm. I miss brushing my teeth with bamboo shoots. And, yeah, I miss um, brushing my teeth with the uh, the tree frogs that were living over there. You're brushing your teeth with those? Yeah, I waited till their kind of their gullets uh, expanded, and I just put a little toothbrush on there. You grabbed put a toothbrush it from the mouth. On. Yeah, put the toothbrush <laughs> on there. <laughs> so it was at a good angle. Mm-hmm. Grabbed it from the mouth. Mm-hmm. Then with so I'm holding the frog with both hands, yep. and then with my teeth, I <laughs> smush the toothpaste on there. And then I start really going at it. Mm. How did the frogs react to this? He squealed a lot. Really? Yeah. Didn't like it. Squealing? Yeah. Squealing frog. Yeah, just a squealing frog. Mm. You'd think they'd be croaking, but no, they're squealing. No, 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 no. Not these jungle frogs. Oh, God, these jungle frogs. They think they're so much better than your average swamp frog. Yeah, because they're, they're like, ribbit, ribbit? I don't think so. Uh-uh. <laughs> That's kind of like what it was. That's kind of it was. A... Yeah, because you could tell it had a remnants of a croak. It almost sounds like he had some toothpaste in his mouth. Deep down, well, I, I put some in his too because I figured oh, okay. that he could use uh, okay. a good a little, brushing. I mean, I'm assuming they're not brushing their teeth too frequently. No, they're living in the fucking goddamn jungle. Yeah, no, we were probably the first ones with toothbrushes around in centuries. I mean, all I'm saying is dental hygiene is important, and I don't think it should be limited to just humans. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You ever you ever brushed a cat's teeth? No, but I've talked about it because Puff's breath has been stinking. Lately. Damn, you should brush his teeth, bro. I'm I want to. They get those little brushes. It's like a little finger condom with with little rubber bristles on mm. it. And the the toothpaste they have one. It's like flavored like turkey. Yeah, I'm going to because quite honestly, sometimes I'd be petting Puff and I'd be like, "Damn, bitch, you breath be stinking." <laughs> How does he react to that? He's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds like a goddamn tree frog sometimes, being brushed. Sometimes yeah. I'm brushing my teeth with puff, and I'm like, damn boy, your breath be stinking, dude. You brush your teeth with puff? Yeah, dude. That's that's kind of fucked up. He's cool with it, dude. Nah, dude. That's that. That's animal cruelty, dude. He asked me to brush my teeth with him. Okay, that's an impossibility. You ask him about it, and he'll tell you. Okay, I will. He'll back me up. I will. He'll back me up. All right. Okay. All right, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, we will see. You'll see. Is this the part of the podcast when we, we, we talk about who we'll see? Dude, is this another episode of No, You'll See? Yeah, I think so. All right, so on today's episode of You'll See, mm-hmm. we're... Uh, Examining whether or not my cat, yeah, thirteen years old, mm-hmm. Puff, mm-hmm. Puff Murray, Puff Murray, likes to be used as a toothbrush uh-huh. by my co-host uh-huh. Tom mm-hmm. Tweak. Mm-hmm. And let's just get into it. Okay. Well, it happened, and he liked it, and he asked me to do it. Um. Yeah, I find that hard to believe. Well, ask him, and you'll see. Oh, yeah, we will see. Okay, I guess we will see. Yeah, you know what? 
I, I second that. Okay. All right. Well, that was another good episode of uh, No, you'll, you'll see. You know what? It just, it's never long enough. I know. Yeah. You know, I, I just wanted to go on and on. <sighs> well, who knows? Maybe that'll be another uh, podcast down the pipeline. A spinoff. Uh, another spinoff, you know? We're just building the, uh, the fancy lad uh, verse, you know? Yeah. The umbrella, the mm-hmm. empire. We gotta get we gotta get Munch on the show, and then we can be in the Munch verse. But I'm saying, like, what if we like make all these different podcasts, mm-hmm. and then the Empire starts striking back? Dude, I'd like to see it try. Dude, it might not be good for us because honestly, I mm-hmm. kind of feel like. Well, actually, no. Maybe, maybe I'm. Maybe it would be good. I think Darth kind of wins out in that one. Yeah, no, no publicity is bad publicity. Yeah, I mean, where all publicity is good publicity. I don't know what they say, but yeah. Anyway, look forward to that and many other podcasts mm-hmm. brought to you by the Fancy Lab Productions mm-hmm. as we continue building this empire. Oh yeah, but you know what? In the meantime, why don't we just focus here and now on this skateboard podcast that we're at? This isn't. No, you'll see. No, nope. this isn't Big Zoe brushing his teeth with a tree frog in nope. the jungle. Nope, nope, absolutely not. It's not any other podcast. This is the Fancy Lad podcast. Yeah, where we and talk exclusively about skateboarding, skateboarding only, mm-hmm. and hard hitting skateboard journalism. Oh God, hard hitting skateboard journalism. And as you know, this is a new season. This is a new season. So I kind of want to turn a new leaf. Oh, we've been turning new leaves. And we just cut all the crap. We cut, cut all the crap, you burn know? all the bridges. No more jokes. Mm-mm, no more. No more talking about dicks. Okay. If it comes okay, up yeah, yeah, no, okay. You can talk about dicks, but you can't be joking. Okay, no jokes. I mean, I don't think I, we ever joked about dicks. Actually, you're right. Now that I think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, I think it's time we take ourselves seriously. Oh, I haven't taken myself seriously the whole time. Because I think that people might think that we're troll, trolls out there. People think we're trolls. I think they might be thinking that we're trolling. Why would they think we're trolling? I don't know. But you know what? Sometimes people, I think, confuse just someone looking for a good laugh, mm-hmm. and they don't get the joke mm-hmm. as, oh, this person's trying to troll me. They hate us mm-hmm. and everything we do. I'm talking, I'm trying to say pretty much anyone else in the skate industry. Oh, okay. So I was gonna. I, th- I thought maybe specifically you'd heard that someone thought we were trying to troll. No, no, no. I'm just making assumptions over here. No, no. I was afraid that one of our past wonderful guests was afraid that we were trolling them. No, no, absolutely not. Um, we love all all of our guests. Yeah, of course. But I'm trying to think like, why doesn't Tony Hawk not return my calls? Mm-hmm. You know, why doesn't Christian Hosoy not return my calls? Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Um, who else I mean, is we can go down the line. Your Mike V, uh-huh. Bam Margera, uh-huh. um, the Muska, the Muska, the Muska. Yeah, the boss, the boss, the big old capital B in the boss. The big old they put the capital B ran in the ran boss. ran ran. Pretty much any character featured on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, I can guarantee, is not returning my phone calls. Damn, that's unfortunate. You don't know, think I'm, we could get cab? And I'm starting to wonder why. Mm. I mean, don't you think it's clear? Uh, no. If they, all right, if they come on the best skateboard podcast of all time, mm-hmm. right off the bat, right, then where do they go from there? Oh, God damn it. I have nowhere to go. You're right. They may as well do all the lower level tiers. You know, you're mm-hmm. the lowest level I could think of. I still haven't seen this, but people mention it time and time again. There's one called, I think it's the, the Eight Club. The eight club or the ten club? I don't know. It's either the eight or the ten club. Yeah, I haven't heard of it, but I'll look into it. Mm-hmm. I doubt it's good, but there's that one, and then there's a few other upper tier ones. You know, like Vert Button. You know, big the big boys. That's you know? true. You got your big boys. You got your big boys. You got your Vert Button. Yeah, the Vert your, Button uh, doesn't get much higher than that, except for this podcast that we're talking about right here, the Fancy Life Podcast. Right. Yeah. No, everything else is below that, below yeah. us, yeah. and above the eight or ten club, whichever it is. Okay. Well, I guess this is the problem. I mm-hmm. think that I'm actually aiming too low. Oh. Yeah. I think that we should actually shoot for a guest mm-hmm. that's even higher than all of those schlubs I was talking about. Oh my goodness! Can you take me? 
Yes, I can take you higher. Than all these schlubs we were talking about. And I will welcome you. Yes. With arms wide open. Uh, father of mine. Tell me, where have you been? Uh, I guess next to you recording a podcast every week? Oh. Or bi-weekly or something, whatever. Yeah, you know, when we get to it. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. my point is, let's find someone. Let's let's go to Hollywood, baby. Dude, you know what? Let's take a little break. Let's go to Hollywood. We're going. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break. Mm-hmm. I'm all, I'm actually out of my liquid death, so I need to go look for something else to drink. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we're going to take a quick trip to uh, Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, so it's going to be real quick for you guys. It's probably going to be eh, about twenty hours for us. Yeah, that's true. You know, both flights, and then you know, yeah. right, we'll, we'll be back. back one day. Yeah. We'll be back. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yankee Doodle came to town without his macaroni hat. All he wore was a crown, about eight gold rings, some Louis Vuitton, and I'm pretty sure he had clown shoes on. He was walking with a strut like I never seen, and he drank it from a can so crispy cream. So we introduced ourselves just to see what was good. After all, he was new in our neighborhood. Well, my name's Crook and Sam, and I'm here to say that I make a mango cushion in an American way. The natural mango flavors really make it to tops, not to mention all those cute melon, melon hops. Mango American comes from clown shoes beer is conveniently available throughout the year. So what do you say, boys? Have a drink with me? Yeah, I'll take one. Yo, I'll take three. For more information on Clown Shoes Beer or where to purchase Clown Shoes Beer, visit www.clownshoesbeer.com. Yeah. And we are back. Oh, we are back. And that was a good break. Oh, my God, Tom. It's just one of those breaks you dream about. Mm-hmm. And as we all know, I've been dreaming a lot about breaks lately, but we're not going to be able to get to that. That's true. Right? We're not going to get into that right now. We're going to save that for the spinoff uh, Break Dreaming Podcast. Break Dreaming Podcast, part of the Fancy Lad uh, universe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But also, I'm going to I'm gonna get into this real quick. Oh, man. Dude, this is going a mile a minute, and I love it. But let me just really quickly hear what that is that you just cracked into. Oh, uh, well, this here, this is a Clown Shoes brand beer. Oh, this really? is the classic Bubble Farm IPA. Oh, God, one of my favorites. Gotta love the Bubble Farm. And you gotta have respect for those farmers. And, you know, in that case, let me just also just... Oh! Uh, just honor your crack with another. And, you know, I also am loving the speed at which we are going through this. Mm-hmm. But I, I gotta know, what did you just crack into? This is actually a Galactica West Coast, I, West Coast style IPA. And you know what? It's kind of in honor of, I'm happy to say, mm-hmm. we took a trip to Hollywood. We came back. We found our special guest, mm-hmm. William Spencer. Hello. Oh, hey, guys. The William Spencer, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Skate Ninja, mm-hmm. as you all know and love. We hope you do. We really yeah. hope. <laughs> <laughs> There yeah. you go. Cracking yourself. Oh, it looks like another clown shoes. Mm-hmm. Ice cold Coca-Cola classic, you guys. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, because you're such a big Chalmers fan? Mm-hmm. You know it. Dude, where has he been? Ah, good question. That is a good question. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He rips. Stuntman. Good at it. Where is he? Like, I, sh- he should be doing awesome things. Is he a fellow stuntman? He was up in Canada. I know he had a decent little career going there. Yeah. Ah, Canadian wow. stuntman. Are there any other skateboard slash stuntmen that you know of besides yourself and Alex Chalmers? Um, that are like super deep in the game. I mean, here's the thing. I know quite a few guys that do a lot of the skateboard jobs, but they don't usually dabble too, too hard in like fully being a stuntman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, cause there's, there's definitely people that come out and I mean, Willie Santos got me a job on this TV show the other day. It was freaking awesome. By the other day, I do mean months ago. But yeah, of course. Time. Oh, time. Yeah, time um, Time doesn't exist. It's fine. But yeah, you know who I, I work with a lot, actually, is Sierra Fellers. Interesting. Oh, really? He does a lot of skateboard stunting. He doesn't get full-blown stuntman, but he, in fact, gets up in there. He's a great performer in general, dude. If you need someone to deliver skateboarding, he yeah. is. He is. Anyway. So uh, I'm trying to think other other people that I really, really like get stunty also. Well, well, what was the show? What was the the Willie's Workshop show there that you're talking about? The Wait, Willie Santos has, show. Oh, so he actually got me a job on a show called, um, hang on, Animal Kingdom. 
and it's some TV show, I people love it. I, that, will I watch. think that's I think that's been on for a lot for quite a bit at this point. I think you're right. Wow. Um. Anyway, it, it it's really fun, but it's always random because the skateboarding and TV is always kind of like, hey, these are giant cracks we didn't tell you about, and good luck with that, and. Oh, but you're also holding a pitcher of water whilst you do it. And oh, by the way, we're not really filming that, but good job slamming. You know, yeah. a lot yeah. of that. So, you, you, yeah, I guess that you still consider that skateboard portion stunt work. I mean, I always oh. think of it as your parkour. Uh... I mean, yes. Uh, it, here's the thing is if you, for instance, I don't know if you ever saw a kid's show called Zeke and Luther, and it was like on Disney Channel. And there were a bunch of awesome people on it. Like Mike York was on it for a while. Mm -hmm. Sammy Baptista. um, Big Cat was on it. Uh, Actually, Jimmy Gorecki was the one who kind of was like the skate coordinator guy on it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so what was interesting, though, is like I would end up stunt doubling both of the lead skateboarders. And Sammy was one of the main doubles. And so was Billy Roper. He did a great job. But guy that can nose me in a pig table uh awesome guy who can knows me a ping table and then also slam into a bread rack on purpose Mm -hmm. not every not everybody wants to do that yeah so that's why i it would just cross over for me where like yeah well yeah he's awesome and knows many but he's not gonna run into that thing for sure so you're that guy so i worked on that show a lot because of the like perfect niche in between skateboarding good enough and then getting murdered you know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I yeah. mean, obviously, you know, from everybody's public eye, uh, the biggest sort of skateboard stuntmen were jackass. Sure. I mean, whenever I was growing up, we right. would joke about doing stunts, and it was always yeah. in reference to jackass. Yeah, and what a great influence! By the way, like, I really loved that as a kid. Like the the idea of it, I really loved it as a kid. Well, I just love oh, yeah. that it was the one thing from actual skate culture that broke into the mainstream. Yeah, it kind of felt like it was like yours a little bit more. You know, it's like, yeah, I know yeah. you guys all like it, but I really Yeah, yeah. It. No, yeah. it felt it felt weirdly personal. I totally agree with that. It felt personal and just like a great plan. They're like, well, I never thought about that plan. That's too bad. Well, we better get on it. Like, those yeah. guys are awesome. I could find a shopping cart today. Let's do this. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know where totally. shopping carts are right now. 24 7 they didn't reach it they didn't reach out to you to be in jackass forever they did not but you know who did is steve-o he uh he actually maybe this uh, oh maybe last year i did some trick with a with a mini tramp where i cruised up on a skateboard and then flipped from the mini tramp but the board is like hippie jump so it just keeps going mm-hmm. and it was pretty heinous to actually make it work and he saw that and he was psyched and he sort of, he sort of like back catalog he's like well hang on a minute some of the stuff you're doing is pretty cool and so he he was like do you mind if i post it and then i talked to him for a while but i still think to be honest with you guys i am still like a like a like in the back of your mind i'm like a shadowy character that you're like he exists and he does things but i'm not like a forefront i don't know how to describe i'm kind of like because you don't think you're living in the forefront of people's minds I don't. And by the way, I do a lot of crazy things that are experiments. So in a certain way, I'm not mad at that either because I don't every mistake or things that you later on are like, oh, that was not that good of an idea. You don't want all that to live in people's brains. So when I dip in and dip out, I do something good and then I leave and try something else. And but I think for them, I think the level that I'm at, yeah, they could have asked me to do that probably. But at the same time, I'm not as I mainstream. Guess- me as you would you know what i mean i'm still not as mainstream as you would in a way i am and in a way i'm entirely not i don't know well you know you're a bit of a an anomaly and that's why you know i feel like first of all let's back it up a minute because Mm -hmm. i just think that it's uh you know a thing of beauty that you asked to be on the podcast first and foremost uh because i mean I mean, that's the first. We got to L.A. We got walked out of the yeah. out of the gate. You're there with a sign that says "Fancy Lad Podcast." Please have me on. We said, "All right, I guess." And then we just I turned around, got back on the plane. Yeah, you know, picked up the clown shoes right at the gift shop in mm-hmm. the mall or the airport mall. As one naturally, does. Mm-hmm. 
And, you know, that's not to discredit you at all, because I'm actually saying uh, I was like honored because I was like, you know, there's such a select few that uh, even delve into this realm of creative experimental skating that, I mean, Tom and I have been watching the Colorado part since the Coliseum days. And, uh, you know, it was just huge. It was just a huge monumental, like whenever something like that came out, it just would, uh, you know, just, just sort of, uh, it resonated with us. It would rock. Yeah. It would, uh, you know, it would rock the world of skateboarding for a moment, you Mm -hmm. know, because Mm -hmm. it's so different. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I got to give credit where credit's due. I feel like you are, you know, you along with Richie Jackson mm-hmm. and even, you know, Fancy Lad's own Colin Fisk mm-hmm. were doing it way before Fancy Lad. And it's, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's just an honor and a privilege to have well, you on here. I mean, I A, I appreciate it. B, I, um, you know. It turns out that skateboarding is, in fact, fun. Interesting. Oh. You were mentioning that before we started the podcast. Crazy. It's a crazy idea I had one time. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it will stick, but I'm saying somewhere in the ether there, it could be fun and yeah. for fun. So you're telling me it can be fun and also just for the sake of fun. Well, you know, there's a couple there's a couple catch twenty twos with that statement though. Because you say skateboarding's for fun. But we watch your freak out montage mm-hmm. at the beginning of the Colorado part, and clearly it doesn't look like you're having fun in that moment. You know? Truly. Truly. The <laughs> sacrifices we make to make what we see in our minds. So I sacrificed fun that day to make sure that trick got landed. How sad. That's what I'm saying. I think that skateboarding is fun, but I think sometimes the grueling process of making a video part is not very fun. No, and and you're entirely right. But I think the idea, because I think this is the other thing, maybe that, you know, just as a quick backstory, I don't know what you, what you know about this, but when I was making Colorado, I just got done with a, my first video part for uh, Burning Daylight. And in Burning Daylight, basically, my older brother, Shad Spencer, fantastic style. If you haven't seen him, please watch it. You'll be like, oh, it's like Patrick Swayze on a skateboard. Fantastic. Yeah. I, th- that's who I was looking at my whole kind of like growing up. And I, he and I are actually half brothers. We had no, I had no idea my whole life until maybe a few years ago. And so kind of looking at that and like wanting to be that and then having different skills and like different things that I was naturally into that skateboarding entirely intimidated me like the the, how it was being done by him with that much style and finesse and also just like I dare say lack of fear somehow that kind of when I started to try to I I realized that the way my brain works and it, it must be put in upside down or something because I don't going to college and then people like telling you what you're supposed to do but then they're not sure why they're telling you and you ask them and then they're like, I don't know, that's just in the curriculum. Like who made this that at some point I realized, Oh, I can't, I cannot do college. Actually. I just, I have too many questions and nobody has any answers. So I was like, Oh, I guess I'll just skateboard because my brother skateboards. And so that burning daylight video was the first time. And what I did was, is I dropped out of college. I stayed on my brother's couch as he's filming for burning daylight. He's on that company. Mark Spencer is kind of heading it up. And they have a bunch of great people on there. Jared Stutes, Monaco Candelaria. Anyway, the point of it is that they uh, they were mid filming this video, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Hey, um, I like to jump off stuff sometimes, and um, um, I can do a flip here and there." And by the way, the funnier story is that when we were kids, one day my brother showed up, and he must have I don't know, maybe he was like twelve or so, and he could back handspring down the driveway, and I was like. Hey, what's up with that? And he's like, I don't know, but it turns out I can do it. And he could just do it. And so as a kid that was already in my mind, like, Oh, flips. Yep. That's the one. Like I like, apparently everyone should be able to do this. Well, also terrified of that. But what ended up happening is as this video is being filmed in front of me and I'm staying on the couch, not going to college, kind of going, what does a person do with their life? I was like, Oh, I should just go out skateboarding with these guys. And sure enough, at the end of every session, people would be like, man, this ledge, I, oh, I'm not feeling it today. And I would be like, 
Hi, hello. Uh, is, are you done filming? Uh, can I? I'm gonna jump from a tree, maybe, and also, um, I don't know if the skateboard will be there, but I'm thinking about where a skateboard would be if I was gonna jump to a skateboard, and they were like, uh, yeah, "Knock yourself out for the next four minutes here, right?" So what I did was, is I snuck up on those guys, and as they would film a real video, right, and the video came out and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. I would sneak in there when no one else, when everyone else was like, I'm tired. My shoes, these are the wrong. I don't, my laces are anyway. And so at the end of that video, I was so shocked that my friend Jared Stutes came to Mark Spencer, who had been filming the whole thing. And he was like, Hey man, I don't mean to ruin your day or anything, but I think William might have enough footage to uh, make a video part. And Mark was like, I don't think so. Mm. I don't know. And by the way, like for for how I was getting it done, it was entirely in the shadows. And I don't blame him for being like, I don't think he's filmed anything. And you're like, not officially. No, not officially. He has not. And yeah. so when I somehow and Jared Stutes totally think and Mark, by the way, has tons of vision. And after that point, entirely changed his mind and has been nothing but like somehow making me look good for years. Mm -hmm. He had total turn up. But getting back to the original story is this is that. The burning daylight thing, I was entirely shocked that I was kind of like, wow, I'm not very good at skateboarding, but I'm good at maybe something and I'm just going to film something that it turned into a video part. And so much so that at when they were basically putting the video together, they're like, my God, you do have footage. And so they're like, you have a you have a part, we guess. So film, film, film the rest of it. And I did. So when that was over, my like kind of regular-ish as regular as I wanted to be in skateboarding was over and that video came out Colorado was the next step and I was kind of like well I'm so glad that's over like I had no other goals but to be sponsored by someone ever like just mm -hmm. ever and like ever like anybody being like you're not terrible here's some skateboards that's all I wanted and so after I cleared that I was like oh 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 sh oh sh oh shoot like that like, oh, that was the top of the mountain. Now what? That Colorado was me going, man, I'm still not great at skateboarding, but I love it so much. There's a version of it that I'll just make that is like the most fun I can have and not sort of uh, try not to take myself seriously. And at the same time, a lot of the screaming montages and stuff in that are entirely from being terrified of skateboarding and also loving it, being entirely terrified and trying to get there being terrified and wanting to have fun that I was just kind of like two people in the same body going, you're about to jump off this ledge. And I was like, you're absolutely not. We're not doing it. I'll tell you why that's super far. And it's a terrible, have you ever even tried that? I have not tried it. And that is a screaming montage. The so much in my heart being like, please, I love this. I love my older brother. He's awesome. Can I just do something with a skateboard, please? Like, I just want to be a part of this, please. Yeah. That those montages, that's what they were. That is right. exactly well, there's some things in skateboarding that are universal because, you know, trying to psych yourself up and all the frustration, you know, mm -hmm. I think everyone goes through it, even the most normal of skateboarders. Yeah. But, yeah. Although they do it rather subtly. I'm always impressed with that. Yeah. But, you know, I was I, I, I was mentioning this to I don't know. It, it's kind of weird. Creative skateboarding, the sort of like pressure to not do the same tricks um, that you've done before. And also not the same tricks that the only the few other like creative skateboarders are like stepping out of the, the bounds trying to do because no one ever calls out people, you know, doing a kickflip because Rodney Mullen already did one. Right. <laughs> they certainly don't do they? It's kind of weird. Don't you think? But I mean, it's not only is it weird, but it is, Hey, well, um, that's passable because of the time period. But now, now it's entirely where you're like, I ask Rodney what he thinks. He'll be like, I didn't think it was a good idea in the first place. I just liked it. That's yeah, what he'll yeah. say. You know? Yeah. Actually, yeah. I heard, I heard, yeah, that the kickflip almost didn't even catch on. For I, f I forget where I heard that, but for whatever reason, it took years after he invented it for people to actually start doing it and having to catch on. Well, and that, and that, and we can entire, I mean, I could go on about this for days, but his ability to like, and I'm sure it did at some point, but his ability to his feelings not to be hurt by that. And just kind of like, whatever, I'm so good at this. I'm just yeah. going to go around the world and beat everyone again real quick and free stuff. Hopefully that's what it was filling in the blank between him going. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty amazing though. Right. I, I kicked, 
the board and flip and then land yeah. back on and everyone's like yeah no one's ever done it right transition. there's not enough transition maybe yeah yeah the board is did too, you like did you get a lot of uh hate for after the Colorado part from i mean i mean you know legit skaters must have Oh, dude. Well, here's the thing is, A, I was living in a car at that point in California trying to, like, get into stunt work. I had bigger problems. But when I finally, someone tracked me down, I ended up, these two other stunt guys that were in, and they're lovely. They're uh, Landon and um, my other roommate. He he basically, uh, they were just kind of like, hey, dude, you live in your car. Let's not do this. Just live in the living room. And so I built some of this, like, square sort of I don't know, like an area that was a curtain that was perfectly square, that just enough for a bed. Anyways, when I finally uh, was kind of established in their living room, one day my roommate came out and was like, hey, man, you see this on the Internet? And I was all, what? And he's like, yeah, on YouTube. I'm like, what the f- is YouTube? And sure enough, that video just kind of. <laughs> and so I simultaneously was like, oh, is that good? Like how like how many people are watching? Like that's a lot of. That's a lot of views, but like, do, 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 is this normal or whatever? And he's like, I don't think it's normal. I was like, okay, this is amazing then, I guess. And then I, I remember kind of like, okay, well, this doesn't get me out of a car, I guess, but whatever, that's sick that I, at some point he was like, Hey, why don't you, you know, um, the comments are kind of crazy. You should check them out. And I was like, you kind of heartbroken because I, me, I was so shocked that I made another video part at all. Like that I was able to pull myself together and not be terrified to make something that I was like deeply disturbed that people were like, well, that's not even skateboarding. I'm like, yeah, but it also isn't terrible. Like, can we just celebrate what's there? And like, yeah, I, you know, like I was like, yeah. but really though, like I did, like, no, we can't, totally... we, we can't celebrate our differences. Yeah, no, gross. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I was, uh, I was baffled and, and to be honest with you boys, deeply hurt my feelings. It deep, like deeply was like, because I'm a pretty sensitive person. I just am. I'm very like, Hey, most oh, artists, most artists are. Yeah. I'm like, like, I'll cry about it guys. I will. Because I, because I just want to be sincere and be like, I don't know. I just thought it would be cool. I just haven't seen that before. I'm not saying everyone should do it. I just thought I would give it a try. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Like it could be lame or it could be cool. Let's, let's just see what happens. And I didn't realize that there is not always a time and place for that in people's minds until yeah. you stack on 10, 15 years and then it's totally fine. And then we, yeah, all I was going to say, we probably got a lot of more hate when we started than now, which I guess is just a change of the times, but that was even before that is right. what I'm saying. So I was just wondering, yeah. it was probably at another level. Yeah, I, I, I think it was like, why are your feet on the ground all the time? This isn't skateboarding whatsoever. What is the point? Like, I can't believe you're trying this hard. Oh, my God. Why are you screaming for attention? And I was like, oh, my God, at least it's not boring. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we've gotten that, yeah. too. We the uh, these guys try too hard. I'm like, are you not trying when you're filming a part? Yeah. Like, yeah. is it possible like, to, do you mean? to try too hard? You're just p- yeah. Yeah, picking all the tricks that are are just uh just simple enough that it looks like it's a little difficult but it's not difficult mm. just comes easily yeah i'm like who is that guy like if you skateboard you're trying for sure you're just trying you know i just yeah i think i, I there's a certain level of add or something that i just people are always like well maybe you just you know play the classics show them the old front flip and i'm like i am so bored i cannot i will probably not be playing the classics at the demo i don't do it i i want something new it's not for you it's just for me because i can't stand the same thing i i get bored so easy you know the, fr- the front flip though that front oh, flip though that front flip that must have been terrifying you know it was in the worst <laughs> part gentlemen i have yeah i have entirely now kind of developed with my new video part which hopefully we can talk about at some point um i have entirely developed like smarter ways to like oh let's just well let's do a test like let's not die but for some reason that uh when that video part in burning daylight was like coming to a close i was like i gotta do something worth like closing out a video part that there was no more prep than i can for sure jump on a skateboard and i have done a flip off a few things and that was the whole plan hey stepping out into the unknown i love it 
because I because I was like, well, I mean, how you know the old how hard could it be? That'll get you somewhere sometimes. How hard yeah. could it be? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and the uh, did you choose the Bon Jovi song just out of curiosity? So listen to this, you guys. This is fascinating. My older brother said that he always wished he used that song in a video part and never did. And so top of my and by the way, my first this old I don't know if you knew this or if it I'm not even sure that video is on the internet, but Burning Daylight I used "Holding Out for a Hero" by Bonnie Tyler. Oh, and love that song. So I was I was more of like a movie soundtrack person mm-hmm. from the beginning from uh from Short Circuit too, right? Mm, you know it. Yeah, <laughs> that song is so epic. The piano and the freaking giant. Oh, I know. Choir backing yeah. her up. I'm oh, like, I listen. Yeah, oh, trust me, I listen to the extended version. Okay, that's how much I love that song. Yes, just yes. Yeah, she uh, she's not a smoker. No one is. Wow. Um, but yeah, I totally was kind of already had a, like a very not regular. I was like, I want. I was like, I just like that song. They're like, yeah, but that's not what people skate to. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna have to stop you there. Let's do it. So the Bon Jovi song really was. I think it was one of those things where, where I was like, I have no idea. I didn't think I was going to make a second video part. So what do I care? And my brother's like, oh, I really wanted to skate to this song and put it onto the footage. And it was one of those where it was just kind of like, yeah, that's probably going to, we're just going to like, no, not really a filtering system for that. Like, yep, that feels good. I don't really care. I can't believe I didn't break my leg. Let's do this. Right. You know? Well, I love how sincere it is actually, you know, yeah, because I didn't know if it was actually, uh, you know, you're just doing it as a joke song like i just couldn't believe here's the thing and every time this happens i'm always like uh does like and i do it with videos all the time where i'm like i don't even i push the button and if i go i feel good i just don't i can't because if you watch a movie and that happens they'll put on some busted song that if you heard it by itself you'd be like this is the worst song i've ever heard and to the right movie you're like i do in fact like your song i do so I sort of have more of a feeling like that and not caring either way for me is the joke. Like you don't like it. You do like it. There's a part of you though. When you watch it, guilty pleasure, like that does really go well. It just yeah. does. I hate it, but I, oh. I like that because it messes with you. Cause you're like, we're all so cool. And you're like, but does it matter? Yeah. yeah. No, it's great breaking that faux pas. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, I, I mean, people, you know, I, I've seen this this like meme or whatever going around where uh, peop, it, it, there's like a saying where it's like, I may be cringe, but I'm free. And, you know, there's some there's some wisdom to that. Yeah. I mean, it life is so short. It's so hilarious how short it is. You look at people that are that are 60. You're like, oh, my God. And you're like, you know, that dude feels like he's you. Right. Like he just blinked his eyes. And that dude is 60 and that dude's thinking about which style of Walker to get. Like you better do it and do it. Just do it now. Like what are people going to do? Make fun of you forever. I doubt it. They don't have, yeah. they don't even have energy for that. Yeah. You'd be surprised. You know what? I knew there was going to be a comeback to that and I'm not <laughs> mad at it. I'm not mad. But you know, yeah. you're, you're, you're clearly an individual, not afraid to be himself. You know, and that's why I respect you. I respect that. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. What you see is what you get, gentlemen. But so, I mean, after the Colorado part came out, though, were you like, whoa, I have like a million views. I'm going to be this big pro skater. Not at all. I couldn't believe I pulled it off. I was like, I can't believe these people are watching. This is crazy. These suckers. You weren't sending that out as sponsor me tape to like every company. no, you know, I was so embarrassed by the comment. Like, instead of going, hey, somebody likes this, I went, oh, well, the, the normal people don't like it. And that I was, like, deeply distraught by that. And kind of, I remember Burnett, I was with him because it was his idea. He was the one who told me, hey, like, he's Jared Stutz's really good friend. He kind of, like, you know, he grew up around him. And, and Burnett took care of him a lot. And they used to hang out at, like, Boulder Park. And so through Stutz, I think Stutz went out to, to California and showed Burnett burning daylight and Burnett was like well that's crazy your friend is trying that flip situation that he's like tell you what why don't you tell him that if you can pull that off I'll give him a little spread and thrasher you know and and um and we'll just find a photographer out there somebody shoot or whatever and so 
after that all went down, I was out in California again. Cause I like, when I first move out here, staying in my car, trying to get into stunt shows, trying to get into stunts somehow, any way you can, you kind of try and sneak in the door. Um, I was going back and forth and like living with my brother and like working, you know, landscaping and stuff coming back out that one of the times back out with Burnett, he kind of caught up about it after the article came out. And he was like, Hey man, I saw you wearing some Nikes or whatever, you know, in the, uh, in the interview, do you, you want me to hit him up for some shoes? And I was like, I, there was a part of me that was so insecure about it that I was like, <laughs> that's hilarious. No, like we won't waste their time, Burnett. We won't waste their time, you know? Because yeah. I was too internally struggling with the fact that I had made what I wanted, didn't ask anybody. And then when it hit the way that it did, I was just worried like, oh, my God, am I accidentally annoying the whole planet and didn't mean to? That yeah. I couldn't even celebrate the parts of it that really matter, which was he was I'm Michael. Bur I run the Mac. I just asked you if you want shoes from Nike, like what? And I just couldn't wrap my mind around it, you know. Right. So, it seemed like, I mean, you probably didn't have a fear of success, but um, it probably it, you probably just felt like you didn't belong, almost like an outsider, you know? Yeah, the or whole like time. yeah, or undeserved or something. Just like, what are you guys yeah. crazy? Yeah, the old you got, I got lucky, perhaps, or yeah. you're not thinking sure. Whatever, any you, version. You, of you, you 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 cheated the system. Okay, let's just say it. you cheated this the entire skate industry by coming up with a part where you walked on walls and did flips. <laughs> and anyone that is and is anyone that's anywhere where they are had to, it would be crazy if they'd say that luck didn't have something to do with it. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. You know, no matter what, no matter what, you, what kind of put it position you're in, you know, luck has yeah. something to do with it. That's too. <laughs> yeah. And I think because of my older brother, he is so awesome and very, he's like the mayor of skateboarding in Denver that there was still a part of me that was like deeply, deeply respectful of how he did things. And then also was like, I know, but I just, this is literally like, just makes more sense is more natural. And I'm just going to have to do this. I'm really sorry that there was still a part of me like, don't worry, I'll take my, I'll put my feet on the skateboard more. Like yeah. I will, I will. And if you look in, in, in color, there are some more normalish tricks mm -hmm. that were in there that i was like oh i guess i'll answer a couple of questions here with the feet always being on the ground oh you did, me you, did a, you did a great heel flip down like a six or a seven stair hey yeah. you did watch it look at that you <laughs> did what look at you you're so nice you're like no i, I watched it right before here's so a know what you're talking about yeah i um, know yeah, exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i have seen it before I was very, seriously i was barely specifically you no know, oh you guys think okay i'll nolly flip i'll do a fast nolly flip do what i want to do and then he'll flip okay if that's yeah. what you want sure right. but i still me now and hopefully this will reflect in my new video part if i was any more internally like and it just happens over time that you just like test out how you really feel what things really mean to you do you actually care that me now i'd be like hang on are you telling me that the feet on the ground thing is totally working for you and that your brain works better that way and that you're able to create twice as many creative things even though your feet are on the ground? Let's do this. Like, let's do this now. I'll do it better than anyone and feel good about it. Let's go. And I just, uh, it's, it's taken this many years to be like, wow, I can't let, I let people stop me. I could have been having way more fun and making way twice. Like, to me, in color, could have been twice as good if I was like, Colorado part two. I don't really care. I just want to throw my board off and stuff. See, I get, if I can get back to it, that's what I should have done. That would have been yeah. a much better, more interesting video part. And I just, people be like, well, yeah, but a lot of, you know, you feed on the, and I just, if I could have let it go and been realizing that the imagination is much bigger than the skill, mm -hmm. I could have just embraced that. And then like, oh, I'm just going to do tricks that I use my imagination for. And sorry, I can't three flip very good. Yeah. It's because you read those fucking comments on the Colorado part, man. I'm well, serious. No, it's seriously, that, that, that's like never. Just don't, just don't read comments. Oh, you, you know engage. I don't anymore. Oh you yeah, know okay, yeah, bother. of course. I know this is like what 2005 that this happened or something. So <laughs> I'm well, sure you've learned your lesson. Yeah, you know, I do like how you. <laughs> <that> time. Yeah, <laughs> I hope you've learned your lesson. Yeah, so it's 20 years. If you haven't, fucking smarten up. Well, Loser. I do like. <laughs> I do like how you address that uh, the whole circus trick thing at the beginning of your part. You know, yeah, <laughs> not not many people have a sort of a manifesto at the beginning of their part. You know, yes. I like that. Yeah, but, yeah. 
in my in my mind it had to be done you know? yeah so, but honestly I, the, the one thing that i kind of like differ my mentality like people are always like big how come you don't do flings anymore what's up you were the king of the fling what happened and i like sometimes most of the time i just tell them i'm like well i already filmed that part like it's yeah like check, it's yeah. like checked off in my box like i feel like i already accomplished it and uh i got it out of my you know so i don't feel system. the need to do it anymore but yeah yeah when it presents itself i'll still do it but i'm still just like trying to just you know just kind of even more so just like stick to that like whatever you know like um one thing just be like well there's still there still could be like i just ended up there just on my own there still could be more possibilities of where to go mm -hmm. so i'm just trying to keep an open mind as well you know you, you've yeah. you discovered the continent of fling you, mm -hmm. you've looked around a bit and now you're good with the continent and other people can can search around if they want but you got to go off and explore and see if there's any other land but out there. might i say okay after when you had that that fling where you throw the board in the tunnel. I think it was oh, a yeah. friend's trick in video nasty. You, oh, it wasn't even you, a friend's trick. They put it in, they put oh, it right, in the, the credits. credits. Yeah. Yeah. They put it in the credits. And so, I was like, so, many people, yeah, <laughs> so many people. Yeah. So many, give me my trick back. Thank yeah. you. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so many people sent me that clip being like, Hey, big, check it out. He's doing a fling. It's like, <laughs> do you know who this is? Yeah. But no, even my brothers sent me that clip, not even knowing you, not That's knowing so anything funny. about skateboarding. It's And what's even more hilarious, I'll tell you a little background on that trick because it'll make you laugh, is that my brother was there to come up and there's this very steep side of it. And he was trying to come up front 5-0, the steepest part of it, and then go into the ditch, you know, like go into the rest of the tunnel situation. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so we're doing this like cross traffic situation. And the only reason why there isn't an inside angle of it or something like that is because I was kind of going, oh, I'm not trying to get in his way. I just have this, like, this could be fun or stupid. I don't know. So it always makes me laugh because in that moment, and Richie actually filmed that, that he finally, oh, nice. I'm like trying it and getting closer and closer and closer. And everybody's like, well, somebody's got to film this thing. Somebody, <laughs> someone's got to film this thing. Yeah. I finally, but it was cool because uh, that, I've always seen that. And I was like, dude, there's just something here it's too fun to see what happens because dude, the combination of you throwing it in there, mm -hmm. it is like a slot machine. It could come out any direction. Right. Any well, that's, that's the, that's what I was, was what I always thought was most fun about the flings was like, I'm going to try to land it as clean as possible. And it's just a system of like chaos where it's like, I, most of them, you don't know what the board is going to do, mm -hmm. but you have a general idea. So it could yeah. come out, it could come out amazing or it could come out awful, but you know, it's but just all luck of the draw. Yeah. But that chance. I know. And that's for me though, having whatever imagination I do, that is just exciting enough for me skateboarding. Cause I, you know, as a kid and, and I'm sure you guys had this, right. You set up the GI Joe battle, right. In your room. You're like, all right, we got all the Cobras over there. GI Joe's got a couple of tanks, like stuff to hide behind. Not once were you like, all right, man, <clears throat> Like we gotta we gotta film this battle and um, mm -hmm. it's gonna matter. Right. That no, you're like this is awesome. I don't care if anyone watches. No, nothing ever has to be. I'm about to have this battle by myself and have the time of my life until somebody calls me to dinner. That's it. Right. That I think that element of skateboarding goes away sometimes. And for me, that's the type of tricks that I'm like by myself in the backyard, like pew 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 pew. That I don't even. It's so fun that I'm like. There's a lot of times I'll be filming tricks. And I'm like, I hope I never land this because it's so fun to be in the air going, come on, skateboard. Come on. Yeah. Skateboard. Just loving, thing. just loving the, the process. Thing. Yeah. Cause it's so exciting to see like you're all flipping and like I did one off a, I bounced one off a tennis net or something the other day. And mm -hmm. I was just like, this is never going to flip. This is awesome. Like I don't even, the lady friend was filming and I could just tell, she's like, I'm not sure you've thought about how this should end. And I hadn't, and I loved it, you know, because there's something yeah. stuffy about it too, where I'd be like dodging them coming past my head. And even that's fun, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just think that obviously being on tripod helps a lot so that people can go, William, it's been three hours. I can't do this anymore. But 
it's still the point is, is I realize now that tricks like that, that's what they're about is that they're just fun and I don't care. Yeah. But you and, still filmed it. You know, I did meaning. No, yeah. no, no. I mean, I don't care that I landed it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 What I'm saying is like, I don't like, it's so awesome that you can have both because like, as a kid, you never thought about that. And now it's really cool because you can have both. You can just be like, this is so freaking awesome. And like, I can put it on a tripod and just burn the footage later if I want. Yeah. And you know, what's funny. I never mentioned this to you, but, uh, we got, um, it's just kind of a funny story. When right around the time we were filming for FL three, um, we took a trip to LA and got into the barracks just because I emailed Steve Barra and was like, um, yeah, I'm sorry, but, uh, William Spencer did a trick for the last clip in his part that Colin Fisk already did. And I'm pretty sure that was Colin Fisk's Fisk's intellectual property. So that's awesome. We, we kind of have a problem here. Uh, Steve. Yeah. And uh, his way of making it up to me was inviting me to the barracks. That's awesome. What did I do? It was uh, the uh, it was your last trick where the you ride up to the set and your trucks bash off and you ride the board oh, down to freedom. Dude, you, know, you know what's hilarious about that? Guess who's I guess who like told me to do that is Grant Yensura, who the guy he was a guy who was filming it for me. Weekend Taj guy, yeah. That's hilarious because I was like. I was like, you want me to do, you want me to do what? And he's like, yeah, just trust me. Just ride up with the trucks or whatever. And that like, is funny. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess. Okay. Like, because he didn't, you know, he was like, yeah, I want to put in some creative ideas or whatever. And I'm like, okay, put in something that yeah. is so funny because by the way, filming that part in the barracks, everybody was like, oh man, you like, oh, are you here today? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm here today. Like, you can't film today. I'm like, yeah, okay. Every day. Hey, hey, do you, uh, oh, Costin be like, oh, yeah, we just got to film Costin doing that. I'm like, hey, Costin, they're like, yeah, hey, are you trying to film something? I'm like, yeah, they're like, yeah, no, we got to shut out the lights. I'm like, no. that was like, yeah, it yeah, should have taken, you know, like a, a video, like you watch that video, you're like, it couldn't have taken that long for the love of Pete. Oh, yeah, yeah. gentlemen, the, the amount of, and it's even funny, Richie used to go in there to try and motivate me and just be like, all right, William, let's get this part over. Well, he started hanging out in there, and all of a sudden they were like, hey, William, you can't, yeah, we got to film Richie. <laughs> We got to film Richie's battle commander. And they did. They were like, yeah, you got to get out of here. Richie's got to film a battle commander. And I was like, but I did. I started like six months ago. They're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're always just sitting at the sidelines waiting for that, you know, sub sub in pitch or whatever it is in baseball. I don't even know what it is. That's so funny though. Cause I was wondering, I was like, I wonder, like, I guess riding up with your trucks. That's kind of cool. But I never wondered where he got the idea from. I was like, okay, if that's, if that's what you want to add to this part, well, let's do it. You film me. Okay. That's yeah. So I mean, like I said, you know, uh, I don't, I, I mean, like I said before about the whole Rodney Mullen analogy, it's like, yeah, I mean, these, these tricks should be creative skating like that yeah, shouldn't be limited to any one person. But, um, no, I was completely like, literally I thought it was funny and it was completely reaching out to Steve Bear as a joke, just because at the time we were nobodies. We were, gotta, we were gotta, nobody. Gotta, we had, we had just come out with our first video, you know. Yeah, and but it's, it's like, so sick that he he took the bait, right? Yeah. Oh, he's a yeah. chump. Ah, oh, he's a chump. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that, but <laughs> I, I, I'm saying that's freaking awesome. That you know what I mean? Yeah, it worked. Yeah, <laughs> that's so awesome because I, for years, was like, I thought I was thinking to myself like, he's never seen that video. I know he's never seen my video part in that barracks. There's no way, you know. You don't think exactly. Steve, Steve Barra has? No, he, yeah. I was thinking he's never, because did you know for years and years, like however long ago it came out, like 2013 or two, I don't know, that they would have our top five videos in the barracks. And it's been number one, like the most viewed or whatever. And they refused to put it on the list. They just they would be like, this, we, this was yeah. filmed in here. We're going to put it here. And that is where it will be. Now, here is our list that we like. Yeah, and then I mean, that, that was, makes was, sense. Was that Rich, makes sense for them. For was sure. Richie on the list though? I'm just curious. No, uh, I don't think he was. Oh, you'd have to look. That is a great question. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'd like to look. Uh, cause just because I, uh, I'm just so curious if it's just all of the creative skateboarding, if they just singled you out. Oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was crazy because at some point last year, when I finally did another interview with them, 
and filmed in there. Chase was like, hey, we want to do an interview with you about Spider-Man stunts and all the things. And I filmed a couple of clips, new clips in there that a couple of days before we released that, they were like, they put up the video again with this like greatest of all time little crest situation on it of like most views ever in there. And so I was, by the way, I was not surprised because it was pretty black market even getting in there to film it. Everyone was like, I don't know what you're doing here. Well, that's the thing too. When, when we were invited, I was like, Oh my God, they're inviting us to the barracks to film something. Yeah. Like we're going to go there and uh, you know, they're going to roll out the red carpet. And then we go there and it was like so weird. I had to like talk to somebody to like prep me on the park beforehand with like oh, yeah. a call or text. And then we go there and I, I just not knowing anything, just take out my camera and they're like, Yeah, hey, excuse me, you you can't film here. And I was like, oh, Wait, uh... what? I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> I was like, But we were invited. And they're like, Yeah, no, you need a barracks official filmer or you can't you're not allowed to film anything here. You're like, okay. It's like, all right, well, fine. Get me one of them. And I was like, great. <laughs> glad, go grab one. Great. I'll, be, I'll be here. Glad we <laughs> flew all the way from the East Coast here for just to have a fun session, you know? Yeah, that's so hilarious. Not only that, but you're like, I hope they're patient because we're going to do whatever we feel like. I always yeah. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but if yeah. you have any questions about what's happening, it's going to be tricky. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned the Spider-Man thing, which, you know, what we really got to talk about. But, well, you know, what? you go you go take a classic big so. Thank piss, you, Tom. And Thank I, you. I can jump into this. Yeah, I think that you can cover it and then just catch me up it. to speed. Hey, listen to me. I've been I've been all over IMDb. My favorite my favorite website, my favorite app. And I was like, ah, finally, we have a guest who's definitely got an IMDb. Are you do you really love it? Oh no, I do love IMDb. It is my no, favorite. Wait, I, I thought okay. Yeah. I was like, no, no, that is my that no, that is my favorite website. Oh, slash checking app. I'm the tone. I'm checking the tone. I was like, what oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's difficult to you know. I try to sound serious when I'm trying to be an asshole, so it all just gets muddled <laughs> together. You know. Like, Darn it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's really been my downfall. <laughs> but uh, but anyhow, so besides the the you know jumping out of trees and uh from you know 18 wheeler to 18 wheeler for uh skate videos your i th- is your first like actual like steady stunt work is that when you were you worked you worked at universal for a bit right were you oh, like you I... were indiana jones you were batman is this correct no but i mean <laughs> dude, i have a well here's a yes i mean sort of i mean okay. there's so many parts of those stories that kind of and for good reason kind of get skewed a little bit but right <clears> yes yes I started out like at least a year or so before I could ever even figure out like how to get a hold of anyone who knew anyone to get into stunts. Mm -hmm. A good friend of mine, I think he was a student teacher my senior year of high school. He then goes, I think I spent at least another year or so. I I went and lived on the Indian reservation Mm -hmm. and just helped people for a year. I was like, Oh, that's what you do. Like philanthropy. Um, And in this time, uh, he has gone out to Oakland or somewhere, Sacram- Sacramento. He ends up in Sacramento and he tells me, hey, there's this old lady moving back to uh, Tennessee, to Chattanooga. If you help me move this old lady back, drive this truck with her and her Down syndrome daughter, who's maybe 30. Uh, I will introduce you to the only person I know who has done stunts in a stunt show. And he did Indiana Jones in Florida. Mm. I take the trip of a lifetime as far as like, I'm, I'm going to turn it into a book at some point. It's one of the most ridiculous. I'm like, I I can't even tell you, but at the end of this, basically we meet this guy in a trailer house all the way down in Florida, middle of nowhere. And he's telling me, he's finally telling me the goods about how to become a stunt man. And sure enough, this dude is talking to me about it. And he's talking like, he is just like, like been on every movie in the world and like, Hey man, you know, one day you're like doing stunts and before you know, man, you got a couple of girls on your lap and some ecstasy and you just don't even know what's going on with your life anymore. And I'm like, didn't you do a live show in Florida? Like, (laughs) what are you saying? Like, who are you Mick Jagger? Anyway, this dude also at the end of his speech about like telling me how to become a stuntman, he's like, 
anyway, man, and my friend realized this and he's read a, a couple of books about it or whatever. He's like, yeah, man, that dude's, uh, he's like kind of nudging me. Cause I'm like into it. I'm like, oh, yes, man. I'm like, yeah. And then you're going to tell me about the stunts. Like I'm saying yes to all your stories. Yep. Nobody wants to end up like that. He's like, this guy is like trying to convince us to be part of this cult. And he has like this big schematic, like he's turning pages of like, you're a bad person, but you could be a good person. And anyway, this is where all the partying happens after you become a stuntman and you got to pull your life together. And my, my friends like, we got to get out of, we got to leave now. I was like, he's like, hey, you guys should stay the night. He's like, oh, we can't stay the night. Anyway, cut to, I never learn anything from that guy except for, yeah, you can just go try out for a live show in Florida at Universal anytime you want, like in April. I yeah. go down there. I jump a bunch of flights. My brother like works for the airline and I'm like doing all these flights, trying to get down there, sleep in like in people's cars that I know, like just on the way. And I finally get down there and I call him up because the auditions tomorrow. And I'm so excited. I'm like, man, I'm finally like meet some stunt people and try to try out for this show. And they're like, yeah, what's your name? I'm like, yeah. So and they're super standoff. They're like, yeah, cool. Like exactly as cold shoulders you think people would be like here, like in the midst of like movies, like, I don't know, man. We're all pretty fancy. They're talking like so just like, whatever, dude, what do you want? And I'm like, oh, I'm just really excited. And finally, they're like, yeah, whatever. And then you do this. Yeah, you'll do a fight or you'll, you'll, you know, you're going to fall off something. I'm like, okay, well, thank you. Like super happy and like about to get off the phone. And all of a sudden they kind of turn around. They're like, hey, man. Hey, I got a question for you. I was like, oh, this is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's up? I'm like, please. And they're like, how tall are you? And I'm like, Oh, I don't know, like five ten. They're like, uh, uh, how much you weigh? I was like, oof, I don't, you know, one thirty five. I'm, I'm decent size. They're like, yeah, don't come. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, don't come to the audition. I'm like, I, but, I, but I barely made it to Florida. I like, dude, you don't like, I'm broke. Like, this isn't. He's like, yeah, I don't, don't come. Boom. After going across the U.S. with this old lady and her Down syndrome daughter to like unpack all their stuff, she had like five or six storage units full of junk. Yeah. The yeah. cops chase us. It doesn't matter, but. My point is, is when I finally get through all that, I get back to Colorado. Nobody knows anything. And it's another year, maybe when somebody's finally like, Hey, I actually know this lady who's at the a stunt show at magic mountain. And, um, it's a Batman McGinn show. And so I finally, finally flew out to California, stayed with a friend and then drove up, uh, and tried out for the scarecrow, like the bad guy character. Basically. Mm. But in a live show like that, you're the scarecrow guy. You're a ninja sometimes. And you're just trading out all these outfits all the time, you know, because yeah. they're like, we couldn't, we couldn't hire enough people for this show. But you yeah. have to be five, you have to be five people and get sweaty and try to change before people notice. Yeah. Anyway. Tom. So Tom, yes. Tom, I like scarecrow. What, what I missed. Did you find out why it's called Spider-Man? No, we didn't even get to Spider-Man. I was just talking about his early stunt career. Oh, well, because we people, wanna... <laughs> people always say that. They're like, yeah, that's cool, man. You moved to Cal- California and they just get to be Spider-Man, huh? And it's be nice to be overnight success. And I'm like, after living in my car and six years worth of terrible jobs. Like, I used to have to do background work, like, in drag. Like, downtown, just yeah. high heels, get, like, lipstick on, just, like, marching in a parade. Like, it's freezing. What is wrong with my life? I feel like I, I feel like I heard that you were Indiana Jones and Batman from uh, no, no Boy, No Boy Sinclair. Uh, Hilarious. Yeah. Uh, and this was probably in 2007. So it was just a few years after Colorado. And we were just like, what's what, what's William Spencer up to? And he's like, oh, yeah, he's he's Batman and he's Indiana Jones at uh, Universal. And we're like, what the fuck? That's fucking yeah, you're like, Dang, both of them, though. Wow. <laughs> yeah, both of them I in the same can't... show. <laughs> You're like, what show is this? <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I definitely, um, it's funny because the dudes that played Batman in our show were just huge dudes, just like gigantic where I was like, I don't. They didn't I even just, put, they didn't put a costume on them. They just, they just spray painted them. Just matte black. Seriously, all those dudes still, <laughs> I'm like, I still talk to them. I'm like, good God. <laughs> Shoot, what is that? Yeah. Anyway, so. That was the early on, though, of, of just and basically once you get into that show, I was like so hyped because I actually got in the first try because a lot of, mm-hmm. you know, audition a few times. People are like, yeah, get out of here. But I got in and I thought all was well. And so I just packed up my car, came out to L.A. and like, all right, I'm in a stunt show now. And then they never called me because once you train for like a month, they're like, yeah, well, if you're not high on the list and I'm like, well, how do you get high on lists? They're like, you got to be good at it. And I'm like, I'm pretty decent. No never called me the whole summer and then mm-hmm. into this so i just went back to colorado started 
I was still filming Colorado actually, and then I was just living with my brother doing landscaping. You know? Yeah. You have a uh, ask? Do, were you trying out as uh, the acting role of Spider Man before you got the uh, stunt role? No, dude. I but you know what's fu- it's so funny because man, we have so much to talk about. Um, there's a big I, gap between those and and when you were Spidey Man though. Yeah, there's like a ten, there's like at least ten years in between those, right? Yeah, yeah. well, and there there was a good six where I was either doing background work for a couple years, where just no trying to do stunt work, and then nobody's hiring you, or you can't get an agent, or you're training, but you're just new. They don't even care if you're good or not, if you can do flips and whatever. You're just new. They're like you're just new, you know. And it takes so much time to get an agent that'll like actually put you out for like auditions and just commercials and stuff you know were you trying to be an actor who did his own stunts or just you were just like just stunt man not well, interested the, in that acting bullshit no well here's the thing in deep in my mind i was like well if you become a good enough stunt man just one day they're like hey you're awesome just be jackie chan that's fine like i didn't yeah. think it was like a, it's possible you gotta go yeah. here you got to go here. You just pick one. I'm not like that, dude. I, I like all this stuff. Like when you're a kid and you watch movies being made, you're not like, I wonder which 10 people made this movie together. You're like, I don't know. I want to make a movie. I guess I have to act because I'm right. And then I'll film, you know, that it's yeah. very, you never think about that stuff. So to me, it's all in, and even me now, this deep in, now that I've started and stuff and like do acting and do comedy and do writing and do all the things that I'm still at the end of the day, I just do it because I, nobody's weird enough that I'm like, whatever, I want to make some kind of new Ezra, Edward Scissorhands because it'll be sick. Like I'm that weird. So I'll just make it. And instead of auditioning for other people, waiting for them to make a movie that you want is just the worst, you know? Yeah. So I never wanted to be an actor, but I never thought I couldn't be one. And I never thought I should pick. And I also just thought like, yeah, well, whatever, if it makes sense or somebody wants me to do the thing or sees that I'm, I have this talent. I'll just jump in there. Sure. Whatever. I'm, I'm open to everything, but I never thought I had to. And then as time went on and the more I would do big movies and do stunts and stuff, you know, people would hire me. They're like, Oh, we saw all your skateboarding. We realize you can do flips and you can do whatever, and you can be Spider-Man, but we don't want you to do that. We want you to do this lame thing. And you're like, cause skateboarding, right? The whole point of it is you do you and people mm-hmm. like it or they don't. And there's mm-hmm. no middleman to tell you, yeah, we're going to need you to not do it here in this on that transition. That's not tall enough. We need you to do it there. You're like, huh? Like yeah. you would never, you would never think about that. And so over time, as people kind of said no, or I would have, I'm like, this is a cool idea. Like I'm not, clearly not just a skateboarder. Like I can do whatever you need me to do. Stunts come easier to me than skateboarding because slamming on purpose, I can deal with. Slamming when it's an accident and terrifying, you might hit your back on something. That I don't like, you know, right. if I see it coming, it's fine, right? You punched me in the face and you tell me, you're gonna do it, I'm fine with that. So mm-hmm. I basically started me now and in the next couple of years, I'll star in a couple of movies, but it's because people didn't listen to me is why I was like, oh, and as soon as I like I did this series of short films where I ended up my business partner produced them with me and whatever, that as soon as you're the actor, though, every idea that you had that everyone's like, yeah, man, that's just, I'm not sure we like that. As soon as you're the actor, they're like, my God, it's brilliant. Your idea is just so good. You can talk and you can come up with cool ideas. You could like, yeah, kick like <laughs> yeah, not you're only, like, not only do you look good and you can say words, but you have other ideas in your head. That is mind blowing. And there, dude, and you wouldn't believe the magic sauce that's on it. All my ideas, they're the same ideas that they're like, yeah, we don't really want that for, we don't want that for this movie that I'm like, oh, we should do this. They're like, my God, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm like, All right, you, okay. You think I can't say sentences on film? Let's do this, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, you, that, well, I've arrived there, but not intending to because I was so humble about, like, my standards aren't high. I just don't want to suck. That's it. I just don't want to suck. I'm not trying to be famous or be the best or be the whatever. I just want to do something that isn't you w- terrible. You just want to be part of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. That's it. Like, so that when people are like, yeah, but you could do so much more or whatever. I'm like, yeah, maybe like if it's fun. But I've said no to so many big movies because I just knew it was going to be more of a game of, yeah, man, we're not going to do that. In fact, you're kind of just like a mascot. You don't really do stunts. You just 
put on an outfit and look cool. And I'm like, I don't, skateboarding's not about that. We don't, we don't, nobody edits that. Like if you faked the Olympics, people would stop watching them. So like, I can't be a part of that, you know? Right. right. Like, when, when people really have a contest, they just really, no one CGs contests, it turns out. And so I just was like, that's okay. I'll, I would rather break myself off in an alleyway, make a video part I'm really happy with, and then come back when it's time to be the actor guy. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, impressive IMDb. You know, I actually have the app myself. Oh, you have the app? No, I actually look it up on the God dot com. You got to get the app. It's I a know. good app. I know. You uh, guys, my, my storage is always full. You know that. I know your storage is full, but you delete a few fucking apps that you don't use, you know, and then you can get the IMDb app and then you're set. Listen, you're asking me to make Sophie's choice over here and I can't do it. But there, there are tough choices sometimes when the old phone's full. Um, mm-hmm. And That's I'll true. tell you who never goes on IMDb. Yep. I the only that reason it's even remotely updated is because the lady friend was like, "William, you like because I've, I've literally starred in things like, yeah, you did great. It has millions of views. Like you did it." And I'm like, "Yeah." And she's like, "And none of it is written down or documented whatsoever." And I'm like, "Oh, we don't." we don't take our video parts when we film skateboarding. We don't make a list of our video parts for someone. We don't do it. Yeah. Someone else will do that. Hey, one of those, I mean, one like, of our sweaty and deranged fans might even, I mean, skate video IMDb. site, you know, that's kind of like the skate video IMDB. That is kind of, yeah. But, True, what I, was, but I would but so, never make it. That's all. I would yeah. never. But what I was going to ask was the, uh, the shorts that you directed, where, where uh, could you watch those? Just out of Dude, curiosity on, for myself. On YouTube, you can watch. It's called Two Bellman. And we made three of them. We made one in downtown LA. We made one in Dubai. And we made one in uh, Seoul, Korea. Hmm. And they're like action comedies. Yeah, they're... I'll send them to you, boys. See if you... Well, yeah, like check yeah. them out. About them is they have a... Yeah, they probably have, I don't know, 5 million views each or something. I mean, they did oh, great. Oh, sick. Yeah, they flew, that is really they, good. They flew us to Dubai multiple times. And then for the premiere and all the stuff. And I just... It's one of those things where certain things don't get traction until later i mean which brings me to this whole new spider-man movie we'll, we'll get there but yeah i'll send them to you you guys can tell me what you i think haven't of- seen them but why did you have to fly to dubai i'll tell you why because jw marriott which is the like ritz of marriott's mm-hmm. was like hey listen like we're gonna give you a bunch of money to and if you really think about it, it's a really smart idea it's like if the guys in die hard were like hey so we got this cool hotel. So we're going to film it all in this hotel. We'll make it famous. And then later on, people will just tour this hotel and they'll see all the sites where you film this and then we'll just get money. Right. Yeah. And so that's what they did. They're like, so just film this, all these cool action sequences and all this funny stuff in our hotel. And then all of a sudden it'll be a tourist destination and people, more, even more people will come. So they were just paying us. And then the first one did so well that they were like, all right, so now all the JW Marriott's around the world are they're just betting with it like who's going to be next who wants the video film there next and so with the whatever whoever won whoever was like yeah here's like i'll give this much money that they're like all right dubai's next they're the next yeah. rich we'll go make a movie there and then we'll go make one in, and then korea was last you know yeah so. it's like the it's like if the r&r diner from twin peaks mm-hmm. uh funded the entire show that's exactly what i was just thinking they're like we need to make this diner a tourist attraction Isn't that hilarious though because you're like it's not a bad idea i just you wouldn't think about doing it yeah or if monks you know financed all of sign exactly you know yeah, hilarious. yeah. seinfeld is hilarious yeah but back no, to spider-man please back tom, to spidey tom is a spider-man expert are you I, I, well i'm no that's not true that's not true i'm not a spider-man <laughs> expert i do like hey, spider-man well, I, wasn't I, don't, I don't listen. I don't want to. I don't want. There are Spider Man experts out compared there to myself. Oh, compared to Biggs, though. Yeah, I am. A, I am. I am the definitive uh, source of information then. Yeah. Compared to Biggs, because I've only seen the first one because I like Sam Raimi. Right. So you've only, hey. wait, the, only the first of the Tobey Maguire ones. You only saw one. Toby no, Maguire I saw one. the first and second. OK, so you did. All right. OK. Well, if you're going to watch one, those are a great choice. But th- those are those are very good. Those are I, love, a great I love choice. I, I mean, those are those. I, I lo- absolutely. I loved them when they came out. They were fantastic. Those in the X Men movies when they came out, great, great. Uh, the original, the original, yeah, yeah, but, great, but, great superhero or like comic movies for those times. I guess what I'm asking is, Tom, how did you like the one that uh, William Spencer was in? Well, you, you do you do stunts in? Well, I haven't seen the newest one. I haven't oh, seen the newest one. So no spoilers. Yeah. Who, okay, but, guess who was but, in you're, 
Yeah, you're in that one as well. That guy. But you're in. You're also in. You're in uh, both of the Andrew Garfield ones, right? Yeah. In the yeah yeah. But the the first one was crazy because I wasn't even supposed to. Anyway, I wasn't supposed to be there, but then I was. But how, well, how did that happen? Well, it's crazy. So my friend Ilram, who actually owns this uh, place that I'm in now, he I had gone hiking with him a couple times. Fantastic Korean stuntman. So smart, so clever, should be making his own movies. Doesn't have the motivation for it, but totally could. And just from meeting him a couple of times, he was just like, man, you're awesome. I'm like, I don't, I just like you and you're awesome. And sure enough, they had him audition for the Andrew Garfield one. And they actually picked him before they picked Andrew because they were so serious about the stunt work. They're like, yeah, mm-hmm. so we need the stunts to be real and, and awesome for this because we don't want to be the Sam Raimi ones. We have, it's a new style. It's a new Spider-Man we're going in a new direction. And it's going to be all practical. Like we're going to do CG just, just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so they picked him. And one day I was actually, I think I was filming in color maybe. And I was back in Colorado. I'm in the bottom of a pool trying to clean out the bottom of this pool. And he calls, they call me. I think Ilram calls me first. And he's like, Hey, these guys didn't call you about an audition. I don't even know if he tells me what it's for people from the audition call. And I think um, it's Vic Armstrong who, funny enough, was one of the main awesome epic doubles for the actual Indiana Jones movies. And mm-hmm. so he calls me and he's like, hey, so we want you to audition for Spider-Man. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, hang on a second. Let me just, this is amazing. Okay, go on. And he's like, all right, so listen, um, we'll let you know when the audition is. I was like, yeah, totally. And at this point, dude, my my tech savvy, have a phone. I don't know what kind it is, flip phone, mate, but I'm like, Hey, can you just uh, can you just call, call, call me when it is? They're like, we'll email you. And I was like, no, I don't do, and I certainly don't have it on. It. Can you please just call me? They're like, okay, we'll call you. I'm like, oh, thank God. And so I'm waiting. I'm still in Colorado. I'm just filming. I'm like, I'm not going back there until they call me for this audition, or whatever. Well, they ended up calling me all right, and they freaking called me the day of the audition to be like, you coming in today? And I was like, to where? Like you, you, you said you would let me know. They're like, yeah. Sure did. I was like, that is the worst mis whatever. And so they're like, whatever, we'll just catch you on the next one. And I was like, I don't, I don't think that's what happens with a Spider-Man movie. (laughs) That's not, I blew it. I just blew that. And so they, uh, they're like, all right, man, whatever. It's okay. And I'm like, mother. I'm like so bummed. And so I just try to let it go or whatever. Well, months and months go by. They pick another guy named David Elson. Um, and so now he and Ilram are the doubles for the movie and they do that all the time. If they're filming two units, they always have more than one double because they're trying to get that movie done. You know, they're not going to go, we need Spider-Man over here. Now what? They're like, no, we don't. That's amateur. We always have the two guys. If somebody gets hurt, you got the other guy. If somebody needs rest, you got the other guy. Right. Well, Mm -hmm. what ended up happening is that they're in a warehouse, uh, by Sony kind of Culver city area. And, um, Andrew gets picked. And so he's coming into work now with the stunt team all the time, training to be Spider-Man, getting all his moves down, his swings, whatever, gymnastics, trampoline time. And one day he's at lunch with all the stunt people and um, they're sitting around at lunch. She's like, Hey, you guys, I've been like going over this in, in my mind for a long time. And I used to skate as a kid. And I just think that Peter, Par- I don't know why, but I think it's a really cool way to go that Peter Parker is a skateboarder in this. And scouring the internet for people that look like uh, Spider-Man when they skate, like in that style kind of. And I found this guy, like, wh- like, what do you guys think of this guy? And everyone's eating lunch and like looks at the computer or whatever, you know, and a couple clips in or whatever. And my friend Il Rama's like, yeah, that's my friend. I tried to get into the audition. He blew it. And so they were like, <laughs> get, up, get him in here. Yeah, get him in here. And so brought me down there that same day, met everybody. They were super nice. Andrew was super nice. And so Andrew, Andrew Garfield found you on, on YouTube. believe it or not as weird as that sounds yes well yeah no i do believe it that's just that's just sick it's just funny because he's such an artist dude he's such a freaking he's like his commitment and stuff is great it's like as bad as mine but in acting time you know where he's like you're like oh i don't know if he needs to be that distraught he's like oh he does i'll have a nervous breakdown if it's gonna make it better you're like fair enough fair enough like okay that's sick and when you watch if you watch his movies, though, you're like, yeah, you're not. I mean, it gets results. He's a great Peter Parker, though. He really is. is. He's sure a he's is. a very he's a very very. Uh, myself and and me and Mark Fallon were talking about this the other day. We think he's the most 
most Peter Parker of the the three representations thus far. Hmm. Well, I mean, and for what's interesting, I still am always baffled. And obviously, it's a good choice in the overall. But he's like a person who's like Peter Parker's about to get an Oscar. You know what I mean? Like he's not kidding in that sense. And the summertime fun time of Spider Man, mm-hmm. I think now why people appreciate appreciate those movies is the level of commitment and the contrast between the other two versions of the movie where you get the best of everything now that they all exist together they're like this is sick we have this version this and you get to pick instead of going ah we're just stuck with toby or we're just stuck with andrew we're just stuck with the new guy there i think people are happy about that you know and it's cool it's do you think that it wasn't uh Andrew Garfield was playing uh, the Tony Hawk's pro skater with Spider-Man. And then he, the, he came up with the idea. I don't, that's a good question. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> because he could have, I, I'm not, that is Tony Hawk's pro skater, right? Where you play as Spider-Man. It's uh, Tony Hawk pro skater too. Yeah, and he, he does the trick with the web where he brings the board back to him. Yeah. Kind of like a fling. Yeah, it's like a fling. It's and like goes- a fling. And then he, yeah, he's an unlockable character. That's cool. And when did that <laughs> did that game actually come out? Years ago. Oh like, yeah, that I mean, version though with to- Spider Man's. Oh, I mean that was in the original version. That was an unlockable. Oh, that's character. cool. Yeah, that. So that was like what? When did that come out? Ninety? No, two thousand. Must have been right after the nine. Must have been like two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. Wow. Um. But yeah, he was like he was deeply invested in, in yeah putting skateboarding in it, which was cool. You know, I love it. I never really thought of Peter Parker as a skater myself. More, you know, I, I guess Marty McFly. I guess yeah, Marty you don't, McFly is a skater for sure. He, I mean, he's a diehard skater. He's like yeah, he's absolutely. like a hardcore skater, Marty McFly. Like yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. Like Michael J. Fox skated. Yeah, yeah. Dude. I actually met, it's funny, so this kind of circles back a little bit, but the TV show that Willie Santos got me on, uh, Animal Kingdom, his stunt double is the guy who runs that show. And his son was also there with us. And it was just, he was Michael J. Fox's double for that, the skating and everything. But it was cool to, uh, to like, just the history of that. You know, they're like, you were, you're telling me you were there the manure day. With, with the free, <laughs> no? Like it was pretty. It was pretty cool, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, I saw the manure. Yeah, and it was but real yeah, manure. Yeah, I hope so. That is what people get paid millions of dollars for. You know what I mean? Because you yeah. go, oh, yeah. you always try to justify it, and you're like, come on, that would do it. Actually, having manure dumped on you, I think that's worth quite a bit. I think Tom Wilson's doing all right. Sure is. Man, he plays such a good douchebag. Yeah. Oh man, he's fantastic. It's just so good. But then he plays a, such a lovable gym coach in, in Freaks and Geeks. He good. He good. Oh, he good. Yeah. Oh, he good. I still just can't believe you got to meet Spider-Man. That's crazy. Yeah. But I was wondering, what is the deal with this pre-production skate god on the IMDb? I do, Oh, man. I, got, I would love to know. So this is what always happens. So... It's it's fascinating because in in the if you were just a f- like from the far outside, very far outside perspective of how movies are made or how it goes down or what would happen with that, you know, yeah. that a lot of times, like for me, like when I make any sort of independent movie, short film, whatever, I don't mess with anything. I do the minimal amount of people. I just want to make something cool. And I don't want 30 people standing around sipping coffee, wondering what's happening. Like, I just don't like it. Right. But in the infrastructure of how movies are made, a lot of times people are waiting for the bookends of the look of legitimacy. And with that movie, the guy who was writing it was trying to get me, Corey Duffel. I mean, so like, you, you know, Moose, right. Who didn't he used to be on Baker? Maybe. No. Yeah. 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 No, I know of him. Yeah. It was on the uh, Baker Deathwish family, but yeah, yeah, yes. he rips. By the way, good grief. Um, uh, Garrett Hill. Uh, nice. I love Garrett Hill. Yeah, he shreds. Anyway, we were all there. They just had us all meet up, all the skateboarders, and they're like looking at locations. And so the infrastructure of trying to make a movie that it had been written forever. They're trying to get people on board. And just kind of putting the right people in the right places that they were kind of reverse engineering, like trying to build hype around it, probably 
literally to get money. So we went to Comic-Con at some point and had a booth about this movie that didn't exist, that should be existing. And I was kind of like, are we there signing autographs so that people can realize that there's a movie happening because everyone's really here. It's almost like they were reverse engineering trying to make it so that like all these skateboarders that you've heard of are in this movie. So we should make a movie, which you think Comic-Con's about movies that have been made. And now we want to meet the people that were in them. And then they were like, we'll just have it before the movie right. exists. It'll be, it'll be good. because And so I never, the script or whatever that I read about it at that point, and this has been a long time ago now, I was kind of like, ooh, it's going to take a lot to make this movie something that I'll want to be a part of. And then they just, I don't think they ever, it's one of those things that like, you know, there's so many basic scripts that come out that you're like, oh, this is every movie that if you do it just right, it could be cool, sure that I always felt like that about that script. Like, yeah, if you let someone design this perfectly, yeah, definitely. That it never got far enough along to even kind of be existing. And the guy the guy who was writing it was very nice, charismatic guy, liked talking to him, but it never came to fruition for whatever reason. You know, funding, it's crazy. Funding will come from different places, especially in, in any size budget movie. It'll come from different places and how it gets allocated and who's going to do what. And a lot of times what people really want it's somebody else to give a big chunk and then they'll give a big chunk. It's the same with sponsoring, you know, like when after that first article on Thrasher and I kept trying to get photos to send to Burnett and he's like, that's awesome. But if you had a sponsor, right, then they'll pay us. And then you're in the magazine and you can do ads and they'll get paid. And I was like, yeah, but I did a trick that was cool that no one's ever seen before that it's just a photo of it. And if you told me as a kid that uh, there was some infrastructure behind this that made it less legit, that yeah no one's, he's not sponsored that the trick isn't cool he's not sponsored i'd be like right. that's crazy skateboarding is about inspiring people and doing something awesome and people right knowing the fact that it exists i would never and so in that big infrastructure of making a movie that's what they did is there if you have anybody else that's already sponsoring you then we'll sponsor you and nobody wants to be the first guy to jump in so i think yeah. that 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 may have been what happened you know huh. yeah it's kind of a. Uh a sad realization when you realize that the people in the magazine are there because people are paying for them to be in there. Yeah. And I, yes, it is because I'll tell you this, you would think that just like anything happens, right? You have the nonprofit and then you have the side that makes like the money, but that side that makes all the money gives to the nonprofit. That's okay. So there must be a bunch of people paying for you to put in photos that that are actually inspiring that aren't just by someone who's getting paid for well that's for the last page of the mad the mag the uh something else section right yeah yeah truly with just that one page we can do it we yeah do the one page. yeah i was always anyway not but i mean have, i'm no, sure it's much love to play. much love to burnett you know oh love the he's guy. incredible yeah he's incredible no that's... even i'm sure he drew some inspiration from you for a lot of the you know uh king of the road challenges bless him let's yeah <laughs> oh Burnett yeah he's and you know what's funny this is kind of interesting little backstory is I didn't realize so after Colorado came out a couple of years go by and more than one person is like hey we got to get you a pilot for that reality show like that's it you need a reality show this is so interesting and awesome where are your friends we're gonna make you a reality show that I ended up hooking up with these um producers and I think it was called Liquid Theory, maybe. Anyways, they were like, all right, that's it. We're coming to Colorado. We're going to do a pilot with you and your friends. And mm-hmm. it was around the same time, the first time that Burnett was pitching King of the Road to MTV. Yeah. And I didn't realize I went on a trip with him and Jared Stutes and um, and all their kind of family friends from Boulder Park. And he kept picking my brain. I think it was on uh, it was on Vice. But yeah. It, well, it, well, here's the thing. This is ancient. I'm telling you the ancient. Oh, history. OK. I see. Yeah, this is like yep. way, way back. It, right, right, right. The first iterations of like, ooh, yep. maybe it could be a thing. This is who we're talking to. Because it's a, and typical. Something like that on that scale takes years and years and years and years to develop for them to say yes, for it to be the right timing, for them to like it, them to want it, you know? Yeah. Right. But it was, I thought it was really funny because Burnett is very smart. He's a very smart man. And he, I remember him picking my brain about the pilot and picking my brain about MTV, what I knew. And I was like, he's really interested. That's, that's so interesting that he's like so many, well, it turns out he was pitching at the same time and just kind of wanted to see what really goes on over there. And not even with that show. Cause he was probably like, yeah, cool. If you can get a pilot, if anybody can get a TV show, good job that he yeah. was more like, what's up with MTV? Are they pitting people against each other? And it turns out, I think at that same time I was doing a pilot for one, uh, 
Mike V was doing one as well. And wow. I think he was doing a King of the Road pitch for it. And maybe even uh, it was early stages of Rob, you know, Robin Big. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Yeah, let us not forget Robin Big, you know. That, I mean, oh, skateboarding. That's so cool that, I mean. I know. Yeah. We've, trust me, you know, we've, we've wanted to break into the mainstream. Fancy. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Ever tell since. Me, tell, tell me about your, your, like, what feels good to you as a plan for that? Um, you know, it's tough because, you know, I've had dreams of it ever since we were approached by Adult Swim. And I said, oh, Have you, you know by, by the way, what a great, what a great, in my opinion, great partnership or place to be. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was trying to like really think about it for a while and uh, it's kind of tough because, um, a lot of everyone has full-time jobs. No one wants everyone. If everyone's not uh, working, they just want to skate. So I was like, you know, genuinely, I was like, uh, I don't know, maybe something that was more of a reality type situation might be more fitting than me writing a sketch comedy or, you know, plot outline to a skate sure. story because it's so hard to make a skate story. Not there's, authentic you know it's just you almost have to not be acting at all but put, yeah. have these scenarios it's a really tough thing oh truly truly and that by the way is like takes a freaking genius to work out how much of what is interesting and how much is too much and how much yeah. feels real and how much doesn't feel real and how much is satisfying to an audience more than once right and it's tough being so in it you know not oh, being yeah. able to have that outsider lens too, you know? Yeah. Well, and I mean, you know, the, the guys that did the pilot for my show, I was so insecure about all of it that I could have never, I could have never helped them enough to make something interesting because I was just too like, nobody look, I mean, I'm glad you're looking, but nobody look at me, you know? And I, yeah. I feel like the maturity of, of knowing what's good about something and then highlighting it in a way that's not obnoxious takes a special, you got to craft that just right, dude, because you're what's so good about something overplayed by people who don't understand it is always obnoxious. Yeah. So long story short, maybe skateboarding is just not really meant for the mainstream. Maybe it's just well, meant to thing. be esoteric for these few people. I mean, except, you know, mid nineties was a big hit and you know, any movie True. like that, but, but what's far fascinating as... about it, it was still so serious. You know, for me, yeah. the only thing right. that I think skateboarding is missing is skateboarding not taking itself seriously and making it funny without making it silly. Yeah, it's true. It's like exactly. even in the, in the Hot Rod scenario, did you watch Hot Rod? Yeah. Like Sandsburg? in the scenario, yeah, of where you're like, come on, Sam, come on. It was, I enjoyed it anyway. Um, I just think that it's, skateboarding it takes itself and that's what i've been doing i actually want to this is a total but i really want to make a warriors you know have you ever seen warriors the classic 70s movie oh yeah oh yeah warriors I, come, out come, come out to play play come out and play yay thank clink, you clink, clink. Play, yay. yeah apparently that play, was ad lib too that was totally ad lib you're like yeah, you're like, yeah uh, no can you say it again there. it's pl it's play and there's no bottles and they shot it 50 times and he kept doing it and they're like all right fine Okay. We'll Forget it. it. Yeah. He's like, I actually just can't get them off my fingers. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've always wanted to do a comedy version of the Warriors that's just funny and it's about the different shops around LA or wherever. And you have the fake, like somebody gets like totally is like, you killed so and so. And they're like, we no, dude, we gotta get out. But it's funny and it's not serious, but everyone has the outfits, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just I think it could be rad if you did it just right, you know, like kind of fake blood scenario where mm -hmm. people. Well, like, thrashing was kind of like that with the rival gangs. True, 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 true. Yeah. I just want it to be something where you're like, obviously is funny. And you're like, these dudes are hilarious. Like kind of a put kind of like a, this is clearly not the timeline that we're living on, you know, like that, that, yeah. that was like an alternate, that like an alternate timeline. War. And I wouldn't be mad at like a period piece where everyone has obnoxious seventies wigs on, you know? 
I wouldn't right. And I mean, you'd need the radio to still be like a thing that people are actually listening to, because otherwise, how are they getting all these updates about what's going on? Yeah, with not only, gangs? yeah, totally. But then I want everybody in it. I want like Melch and I want Willie Santos and I want yeah. all the dudes have bad wigs and they're like, hang on, we'll be right there. And just like flexing, you know, they're like, hold up. Oh, yeah. There would be something I, nice where it was a movie where it was just connecting like all the different all these different dots in skateboarding, you know? And... Yeah, and because, dude, skateboarding in general, there are a lot of people that are really funny in skateboarding. Like, they're just funny dudes. Like, have you ever seen the skits that Mark Johnson was doing about the, like, skate contest? And he's fully, it's, like, kind of beautifully, like, I want to call it maybe, like, ballet style, and they're announcing it. I'm not sure. Was it for the back 40? Ooh, maybe it was. But it's just, there's so many people that are funny in skateboarding that I'm surprised. I mean, but that's just it, though. If you try too hard at anything, it's kind of rough, you know? Yeah, right. It's got to be that perfect balance. Especially if you're already known for being good at one thing, and then you go and try to do another thing. Sometimes oh, yeah. yeah you... Unless you're like, an, unless like you're Jeremy an Rogers becoming the world's greatest rapper. Right. No one's going to give it to him because he was already good at skateboarding. Mm-hmm. I can't believe how good at skateboarding he is. Wow. Yeah, he's, hey, he's, re- he's very good. Well, you know, it's something to think about. You know, I'm going to I'm going to marinate on this a little more. And then hey, you put me in touch with some executives down in Hollywood. I'll take a trip down there and uh, set up some meetings for some pitches. You know, dude, I'll do I'll freaking do whatever to help you guys. If there's something I can do, I'm in. I, I want everybody to get in. You know what I mean? I'm like, there's so many there. If you just go ahead and jump on anything right now, the Netflix and the freaking Amazon and the like Tubi and the the IMDb has their own. You can watch movies on. There Mm -hmm. is so many opportunities to have a danged TV show that I'm like, really, these people have one, but we don't have a TV show. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, we've been trying. We've been trying to write a TV show for almost ten years now. No, well, I wouldn't maybe say 15. 10. No, let's say no, 20. I wouldn't say 20. Let's say 20. No. Okay, no, 25. Let's say 20. All right, 25. Let's say 25. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, you know what I've kind of landed on, and I've actually have a pitch deck for it now, is a kid's a kids show. And I think I actually make more sense in sort of like your host that's like a super weird peewee-esque character that's helping mm-hmm. kids with their imagination as they grow up. Yep. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's just weird enough, but you like him, and you're not sure where he's coming from, so... That's sort of, yeah. Hence the uh, the Pee Wee theme song in the beginning of your part. Mm-hmm. Dude, huge, huge. Yeah, fan. we were wondering. Are you, are you a big guy? You're a big Elfman fan, or or are you just a big Pee Wee fan? I'm a big fan of. I mean, I love that what Pee Wee is like the the mm-hmm. way that it looks, just like made in a basement. I really mm-hmm. like that. I like yeah. I like that being that weird could be celebrated that much. It gives me hope. You know what I mean? Yeah, that I really like. I, I think he's. I think in general, people, so many people are so weird and just trying to hold it together that I like it when it gets celebrated. And I like music like that, that is one of a kind, because that's why. Because yeah. like, you could make that song for anything else and it wouldn't sound like that. You make it for right. kind of weird and it's going to be cool, you know? Well, I like, I, how, I like how Pee Wee's was for adults originally. Was totally. Well, I mean, yeah. that's what's incredible about it, though, is you, you don't realize how smart it was of him to, to be both. Like you don't realize like little kids are like, this is awesome. I like the colors. That couch can talk. He's like, yeah, but also your parents are down. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was, I'm just fascinated by the duality and, and that it's, it works that way that I just, in a certain way it's a template for me to be like, wow. So being weird can be cool. Let's do yeah. this. Well, I mean, that's like, you know, same thing with like, you know, kind of with like, or a similar thing like the Simpsons, you know, you watch Simpsons as a kid and you're like, this is oh, the yeah. fucking best thing ever. And then, you know, you still watch the same episodes now and you're like, well, this is even better. Like I didn't well, get like half that. this shit. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, wow, they really tell the future. Wow, yeah. They were... Oh, <laughs> well, God, no, they were, they were on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like watching idiocracy. You're like, dear God. Yeah. It's so <laughs> yeah. Pee Wee with the set design though is pretty next level. Like just the ingenuity yeah. of everything. Well, they they really took that like uh, y- you know, public access vibe to a next level. You know, it's like kind of like yeah, ha- everything has to be made in a creative sense when you're doing like a public access show because you have limited resources. You know, sure. so it's like, but then it's like once you get those resources, still trying to like almost recreate that. 
you know i don't know that's i feel like that's what part of what the that no not at all i think look is i think you're entirely right and i think it's really cool to do so much with so little i mean creativity in general thrives upon the i don't know but we got some shoestrings let's just time to get like let's make the right i think there's something really cool about being thrives upon the restrictions it's true you got to macgyver that shit you know yeah oh what a mullet what a mullet yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i uh my my pops was like that and he uh used to fix everything that way so for me that's a a huge like yeah that's just what you do we have bubble gum and then we fixed it i don't know you know that i in that theme of of peewee that's sort of why like all those it's funny because i'm still my new video part now we're trying i'm literally having have you guys ever heard of a show called flapjack that's on a cartoon network and it's super super great watch it it's like if you watch an episode you're like these people are on drugs but the guy who scored that cartoon i'm supposed to have a meeting with him tomorrow about scoring my new video part to make the music interesting like the skateboard i want it to match the skateboard I, I, like if the skateboarding is weird the music is weird if it gets crazy then mu- that i i'm actually really excited about it because i i want one of a kind stuff if it's going if you're going to highlight the weirdness you may as well really do it you know yeah i've always liked the idea of a, of a video part or or a video being scored and not necessary and i'm not sure it, i'm not sure if it has ha- has it been done i know people like obviously people make songs like They'll have like a whole video with all original music by like one artist, sure, you know? but not or like things like that. But like, because yeah. I know, I know we've talked about like, like trying to do that, or you know, or at least yeah. like doing something like that. But like, actually, like, you know, I love that idea. I think that's a fantastic idea. Well, I and I kind of thank you. Well, I kind of arrived there because I had the ultimate guilty pleasure song. If you've ever seen the movie Rad, I oh, wanted, yeah. I wanted, send me an angel, super bad. I just, oh yeah, like, but but. but but man down. Yeah. Well, till mode. or tilt mode. Yeah. 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 First one. Yeah. I was like, yeah, but even that I'm like, oh, you guys are so awesome. But in my heart, I'm like, I'm real sorry, but I saw that in rad and I'm going to have to just keep it going. I'm gonna have well, to Jer- Jerry Sue reused Fisk's song from the PJ video. True. And so, Ragdoll reused AVE song. So. so, so he's got it coming. Yeah. All I'm saying is gentlemen, is like in my heart, I was like that. I love that movie rad. I just, that feels like the right feeling for the, well it turns out two of the two of the three people that own it told thrasher no like yeah not gonna happen and even if it could happen it's gonna be too much money so it was me going back to the drawing board trying to get other songs cleared other songs clearing realizing they wouldn't work i, I mean i've had my video part done for the last year almost i literally got my last trick and then jumped on that new spider-man movie in february and then the whole rest of the time trying to get songs cleared just so I could, you know, put the video part up and whatever. And um, I finally just arrived here. A friend of mine was like, hey, it sounds like you're having the worst time ever with music. Talk to this guy. He's literally won Emmys. And I was like, yeah, that is a real plan. That yeah. is real plan. <laughs> what what uh, what is this new video? And he's going to do for? it for free, right? Oh, yeah. Or I don't care or... if he doesn't. I will pay that man good money. That's yeah, pay, thing. yeah, pay someone uh, for original work. You don't want to give people money for fucking something they did. 40 years yeah, ago true true I, or or i mean i'm so funny about money dude i i respect art so much and i'm like i don't know how much is it how, how much work did you put in okay you know well, yeah i mean because yeah people always I mean, think it's magic and you're like no i actually i went back to that spot for 14 days no 14 days no you yeah. can't do that on two hands you have to use a third yeah that i uh i respect it so um you had a question what was your question he doesn't remember. Look at him. Who, me? Oh, me. Yeah, no, I did have a question. I, I, <laughs> You're right. You caught me. I did have a question. What's, uh, what's the new part? Uh, oh, yeah. What what's the new it's part gonna, for? What do you think it's going to be on? Or who do you think it's going to be? Yeah, exactly. It'll be, on, it'll be on Thrasher. It will be. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a, William, it's a William Spencer it's solo project. Yeah. That's yeah, going to be on Thrasher. Okay. Produced it myself. You know how that goes when you don't want to argue with anyone. You just make it yourself. That's why you start your own company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. yeah. Seriously. I mean, I know I'm preaching to the choir here. I know yeah. I am. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I basically just felt like all my video parts before this one that I was always like, yeah, that'll work. Like, I, that's the work I could put into that part in that time period. That'll work. Like, I'm not happy with it but i i do at the premiere i won't be upset you know 
that I was like, I want to make a video part that I feel like, hey, this is about as good as you could do. Like, this is like, let's push yourself. Let's yes. take all the money you made from movies and then just put your all every weekend forever. And t- for as many years as it takes, let's make something like just see what the, I just want to see what that looks like. And so right. spent the last four years on it. Just freaking. That's awesome. Just just doing it i am so happy it's over though because well i mean what else are you gonna do you're gonna quit you know never isn't that unfair? that's never. what i'm saying hell yeah. yeah yeah so it's cool you guys because i really did like terrify myself to make it you know like mm-hmm. i really was like wow this is terrible every weekend like my god i can't believe i'm i have to try this again like can i please can this just please be over it was like that that type of thing for me you know and i just I'm just happy with it in a way that I was kind of before this video part, I was like, man, that's kind of sucks. Cause I like, I feel like I've done pretty well for myself and I feel pretty accomplished. There's a lot of stuff I would change. There's a lot. I just know that I can push myself further than this. That was unanswered and kind of having done this video part, I feel good about like, wow. Like I don't like, I think there's also part of me too, that like how good something is and then what you made them, what you meant to make out of it and then how people feel about it. You, there's like a trifecta of like self-worth that goes into it. And I finally made this video part. And I was like, if you don't like this video, like if you don't like all the work put into this too bad for you, right? <laughs> like too, no, really too bad for you that you don't like it. How sad because I, I just wanted to make something. I was like, "Hey, I will watch this more than once and not hate it. This is great," you know. Yeah. Yeah. I had never gotten to that place of like pushing myself hard enough to be like, "You, uh, you're not the worst," you know. I was like, because there's a lot, and we all do it with our footage. We're like, "What kind of amateur made this video part?" You know. Mm -hmm. I just badly wanted to make something to be like, "This is cool. I don't. I do not hate this video. I don't hate it," and that felt great. It really did. So, well, you got to have standards, you know, you do, whether they make you hate yourself or not. Yeah. So they keep telling me, but yeah, I just won't do it. I know, but I don't know. There's something, it's just an odd sort of field, uh, being in sort of, uh, the creative, creative skateboarding category where I do respect Richie Jackson, where he like, if he's if he's gonna do a weird trick he has to do it like perfect and i think that that's part yeah, of his like success is let's that. talk let's talk about richie if you don't mind what like what do you think what do you know i would love to clarify some things for you i have wanted to get richie on the podcast and every time i ask him he gives me some cheeky response oh, what kind of response he gives me some cheeky response Oh, okay. like he has some sort of like, uh, like sort of joke answer to me where he doesn't say no, but he doesn't say yes, but then it never actually accumulates to him being on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting. I, I'm curious. Cause he's also like, like yourself, he's kind of a, what I call a few select of the, the forefathers of the pre fancy lad skateboarding you know not to i'm not trying to toot my own horn i'm just hey, trying to say in general you should, dude toot it while you can toot it like if you have something you know what i mean yeah no one so, else is gonna toot it for okay you. okay fine yes so we little. defined the genre of skateboarding okay well you right, dude fucking fish, calm down but, there though i mean well, calm you down you're, you're, whoa, not, whoa. you're not that good come whoa, on whoa, come, whoa. On, come on give yourself that you pick a side over here what you did was officialize it which is great by the way because it needed it yeah, yeah. There wasn't there wasn't one entire brand doing it. It was always one person standing out in a group yeah. and they were always the outcast. Like one person bo- like per distribution, you know. Yeah, it's like, yeah, all right, they, we got, way, we got three still... brands here. We'll put one person on this brand, which is the weird one anyways, you know. Yeah, and you know they were thinking it's still a risk. We I don't know if we should. Yeah. We love it. Um well, if I may. Yeah. Uh, please do. Richie has actually I have let him live with me after his divorce for oh, a year or two really is Rent he living free. with you currently he is not he he has pulled his life together he uh 
That's not him right behind you right now? Doing With a the- knife? Oh, my God. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess what my question about Richie Jackson is, does he take himself too seriously to be on the Fan Slide podcast? That's not it at all. And I am hopefully, A, he's not a, a, um, upset that I told him that you lived here. Because, by the way, they are some of the happiest times of his life. I think that his his ability to relate to me and me to him is something mm-hmm. that is, A, I think he's a uh, very singular person his like train of thought, who he is, what he wants is very singular. And I think because I'm more open about that stuff, I'm more kind of like, Hey, we're all here. Let's try to not make stuff that sucks. It's not sacred, right? We're just trying to have fun. Like let's not get crazy. That I think it's put into perspective for him that like it can be beautiful and creative. And also we don't have to take it so seriously that we aren't enjoying it. And Mm -hmm. I think, over the years he's really realized that is he a craftsman yeah does he want to make something beautiful he definitely does but for him i don't think he takes himself too seriously i think there's a part of him that he wants his skateboarding to speak for itself and the being on the show or whatever else it's has nothing to do with you guys whatsoever it's an insecurity within himself going what like what does it mean to be on there what what does it right. mean am I, am I saying the right thing am i not saying the right thing does this where it's those two things are entirely exclusive from each other where he understands the power of what's going on that you guys like have branded and done something and have your own direction and are sure of it and he's also going like well you know i'm not like these fancy guys over here and i don't mean you the fancy guys yeah. of skateboarding haven't given me what i know that i deserve and these guys over here, that he, for him, I think it's just a Bermuda Triangle of how do I feel. That's yeah. what I think. Well, I think that's the one thing that we can all relate to is that I've I've mentioned time and time again that it doesn't really, for some reason or another, and I think that that's one of the things that I've been trying to do with the business is trying to actually make uh, a difference in the industry because I don't think that it's just the the skateboarding that we do is valued as much as, you know, joe every tom dick and harry you know mm-hmm. um fuck bro dude i'm sorry your name just happens to be in it yeah. but um and and the other name that you call me all the time yeah i know not to mention i'm I call not to it, mention not to mention dick yeah i know <laughs> not to mention your hairy dick okay. but um <laughs> just keeps happening i know but <laughs> Yeah, no, like I was saying, it's just it's just not valued as much as, you know, somebody who's going to grind down a 20-stair handrail. It's just never going to be for whatever reason, no matter how much we push ourselves in these ideas that I think that it's something that we can all relate to. But, you know, I guess I'm just going to have to meet the guy off camera sometime because I would love to. He's been... Uh, yeah, we've such an inspiration such an inspiration yeah, yeah exactly ever, ever since his, his death his death skateboards parts right yeah I mean, it, he, it was he, like a Colorado part it yeah was like one of those precursors it was entirely in its own direction with the you remember the like nolly wall ride variations oh stuff? yeah oh yeah that was yeah. like not just you're like yeah and now I'm everyone there. does them now everyone but does it was them. also really well done though he's like this yeah. thing out and does all the things like now it, was, nowadays everyone's vamp sliding down escalators you know yeah oh absolutely you can't watch a part on thrasher and not see one see someone vamp sliding down escalators well i saw well, someone well, uh ju- uh all eat like uh, like you know air walk off their board and land on two wet floor signs and ride I them down like also. a like a 12 stair and, and then that's I a complete someone that's asked me, why didn't you do that william and i said i don't i don't i don't <laughs> Cause I didn't. Yeah. Cause this kid did it right now. Yeah. Did you? You're watching did, that footage of not me. Yeah. <laughs> did you know that Ben Cado has been doing some flings though? I did not. And to be honest with you, mm-hmm. entirely honest, gentlemen, is I on purpose will not watch other people's stuff as to not mess with the craziness that might come out of me as a slot machine. So you're like a method actor, kind of. Here's the thing: is when I come across it or someone sends it. I celebrate it. I'm like, these people are awesome. But at the mm-hmm. end of the day, if I, and I've done this before is I've, I've been like, all right, I'll just scroll through or someone will show me a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, well, everyone's incredible. And all the fun ideas are happening already. Like, cause I'm interested in saying what's missing from being said. I'm not interested in also saying the thing that everyone's saying, cause then we're just shouting. Right. Like right. I just don't, 
it's not as fun. I want to be in my own area. That's why you play by yourself, right? Like you by your by alone. I just mm-hmm. like it that I don't I don't interact with it because I feel like I always get inception. I'm like, I'll just start doing something like, ah, so and so did the thing that like I'm not even sure if it's like it, but it just feels like it. I'm gonna stop because it's not as fun, you know, because I'm not in new territory. I'm just in territory that somebody else is already enjoying and doing really well. So right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Continue on. You know, you're but dipping I your think, toes in someone else's pond. Yeah. Right, you and, know? and the overlaps that have happened or whatever. I remember Hunter O'Shea was like, Hey, that's cool that you like use one of my tricks in my part. And like, but I wish you would have gave me credit. And I was like, I didn't watch your part, which is bad. And I'm <laughs> sorry. You know, mm-hmm. like, I didn't, yeah. Like, I would I didn't even, I was just trying to do a trick that wasn't hideous and I could do. Um, I mean, the collective consciousness, you know. Yeah, that's true. And that stuff yeah. happens a lot where everyone's yeah. kind of on the same page. But, yeah. you know, it's interesting with, with Richie now that he is really good at, you know, taking ideas that he's seen other places and then crafting them into skateboarding, whatever else that I think his new video part is going to be totally awesome. And I think that I hope that with this new video part, he can go in a direction for himself that I don't know. I just want his, and I, I kind of have a little, a little bit of a big brother relationship with him just because I just know he can be like a, a, a good person that is not self-involved and is also like realizes skateboarding is awesome. And is at some point not going to be taken over by the bitterness of being not accepted in the way that he deserves and the way that he has worked for and in the way that it should be it should be people should just be like hey you've crafted this trick so well it's a work of art you have crafted a look that's from the 70s and is not it's like you took a time machine there fixed the 70s and came back it's incredible you're very smart for doing that right Mm -hmm. the amount of people that i will be driving down the street with richie and the amount of people that i'll go down the street and just richie hey richie richie how are you what's up richie all the time it's so smart to have crafted something like that 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 alone is worth the credit i just think for him there's a bitterness that comes with not being respected in a way that you feel like you've earned and deserved and it takes a big person to not let that take you over until your bitterness comes back on people and you're like whatever you guys can suck it and you're like yeah but they didn't they're not being mean they're not trying to not remember you they're not trying to not give you credit they're just literally like skateboarding has become fun on the internet and it's okay and yeah did people make fun of us for for it yeah but everybody who's ahead of their time is always made fun of and you can it's like clockwork and then later on it's all okay and we just have to the guys that are bigger than that and go go ahead and make fun of us until until now oh we're good oh you guys like us oh thank you and you're gonna have to be gracious to be like that if you want to be ahead of your time you got to be gracious that's the way that it goes period right and i mean if no one has anything bad to say about you then you're doing something wrong right you know, you got to have totally. if because you're, you're right not if you don't here. have some haters, then you're not you're not doing yeah. anything. And there's different. a bunch of dudes that are as good as everyone that you see. Now. You're like, yeah, there's a bunch of dudes that are incredible and also do all the same tricks and then also have those great pants that we all have. And they are, in fact, not getting above the surface. And that's the way she right. goes. Because you decided that you wanted to stick with what is, which is totally fine if that's who you are. Yeah. Totally. Well, you know, I always have to remind myself there's different uh, levels of gauging success as well. Truly. And, you know, hopefully another 10 years go by and, you know, it's just like the Colorado syndrome where, you know, we'll just be vastly successful Mm -hmm. or or we'll die penniless and alone like Van Gogh. That's what I'm banking on. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably more likely, but hey, (laughs) you know what? Yeah. I mean, for me, though, dude, I it's taken a lot of years to get out of that perspective of like. I just don't want to like, you know, you work so hard to like really push it and then nobody cares and you don't get the thing and you don't get to do whatever. And you just realize like that attitude, like when Colorado came out, I don't know how long after that, but Cirque du Soleil called Tony at the Denver shop. They're like, Hey, that dude that put out that video part, we want him for a Cirque du Soleil show. And Tony, of course, like pure skateboarder. He's like, Oh, you do do you? What do you want from him? And they're like, we want him. We want Rodney Mullen and we want him in, in Madison Square Garden, in uh, and we want it for a New Year's Eve show. And he was <laughs> like, "Okay, I'll tell him. I'll even call him in his car in California, you know." And just like hung it up and never told me. And I re- remember being super 
upset about that because like that one opportunity and sh- dude the amount of pressure being next to Rodney Mullen like no thank you but the idea that someone called about it right yeah that they were actually like seeking you out yeah that that, that made me mad well it's funny because Barnum and Bailey the circus people have emailed me over Christmas to be like hey we saw you we like you we're thinking about you know revamping like circus as you know it and we want you to be part of the show or do something and of course it took me like three weeks to email them back and it's funny how you get mad about that success that you think should be coming and then when it's your turn to like blow it you blow it because you're like yeah. i don't it's what does it really mean what is this but the point of that is those opportunities that do come whatever else they never come in the package that you want and the appreciation for what's coming and who it's coming from you got to just soak it up as it comes instead of going well no i want it to be a perfect I want those guys from Baker to call me, you see, and I want the guys from Vans to hit me up and tell me how great. And you're like, yeah, is that really happening? Or should you just be excited that people are going to give you a check to make some random commercial and then call it a day and be happy that you're not broke? How about yeah. that? How about that for a good attitude? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good move, actually. At, at the end of the day, there's just skateboarding is so what it is that to be outside of it, it's OK and not OK all at the same time. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, like we always say, we're just glad to be part of the game. Yeah, same. We're, I can't we're believe happy to be players in the game. The I can't believe day. what I've gotten away with skateboarding wise. I can't believe I've even been in Thrasher period at all. Hey, like, you know what? Ah. Hey, same. You know what? <laughs> I'm still like, hey, you guys were drunk, and that's okay, and I forgive you, and thank you. Well, unlike you two, I, I, I knew it was going to happen. Really? So- yeah, and and I feel like I'm surprised it hasn't happened more. So I don't know what, where you what guys issue are was it from. that you were in? Uh, one issue one. Yeah, of Thrasher. That sounds, yeah, that sounds realistic. That's pretty, also- that's pretty early. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, William, you know. Thanks again for being on the podcast. Um, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, I'm sure you loved uh, Brad Pitt's character from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You know, I the relatability that that dude living in a camper trailer. I was like, they're not, they're not wrong about some. I've met guys. Stunk. I mean, I You're like would, these guys. That's those are some nice digs right there. They're not so bad, right? Here, right, here's, yeah. what's, here's what's interesting. I actually live in. You guys will you'll be like, oh, I wonder if William is crazy, and then see this place and be like, no, he is that I actually live very humbly and I've had some great opportunities and made fantastic money, but I also just like am from poor people. So I don't know, like I have it, you know, and they give you all the money and then you just have it and you're like, don't let go of it. So like, well, yeah. What what do you want a bunch of fucking empty rooms that you're not doing anything with for? Yeah. That's that's stupid. You're doing it right. I'm kind of the opposite, but here I'll show you. Exactly. Here's a little crazy time for you. So I finally made a self-confidence like, hey, you did something with your life. You're not the worst. But look at this. This is where it gets really crazy is the schematic wall. Wow. Yeah. If you're ever wondering. This is like going into some serial killer type shit, Tom. Oh, wait, is this is this wait, what what are we looking at right now? Is this, this is the schematic for a skateboard that's also I was gonna do uh, this project with Dunkin' Donuts, and I was mm-hmm. gonna make a skateboard that serves coffee, but it's kind of like a you know, like a sailing ship, but imagine that the mast is sideways instead of up and down. So the triangles are sort of the decks of it. And you're mm-hmm. kind of like jumping and dodging, making different parts of coffee and, and things as you sort of, uh, as you sort of ride down the street. It was a, a um, I believe the short film was called Being Tired is, is Evil. And it was about all these people who, there was no more coffee left in New York. So everyone turns into what looks like a zombie, but they're actually just tired from not having coffee. Mm. That'll it's happen. a coffee machine that shoots coffee at people. There you go. Inspired by your time on The Walking Dead. Totally. Boy, have I spent a lot of time as a zombie. Oh, guys. <laughs> that was a lot of time as a zombie. My zombie limp is... She's pretty decent. <laughs> you know, before we go, I, I'm sure you have a million questions for us. I do have a million questions. Um... For starters, what? Uh, how do I get a hold of this background? Oh well, you got to come to the Fancy Life Podcast Studio here in Boston, Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. Dude, how is Boston? Cold, cold. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're supposed to get we're supposed to get right now. Last time I looked, it said sixteen to twenty three inches of snow on on Saturday. And the snow skating is awesome there, I assume. I was going to say, well, which, yeah, which, which is, is fine because we got snow skates. We got the fancy lad snow skates. Yep. Hey, which hey that's cool. You guys, are, you guys are making those. I think that's really cool. I used to do a fair amount um, in Colorado, actually. Yeah. Was, they're, yeah. Uh, it's fun. It's fun it's when you can't go cold. skateboard. It's like, it's like it's so cold. There's snow. It's like, oh, wait, I can still kind of do the thing I want to do. And uh, they have ones now that pop really good, so the flip tricks are there. The, oh the, yeah, that, the, I mean those well, are like the, the double decker ones, ones yeah. too. Oh yeah, those oh, double I, decker that's ones. I used to have the tr- I could I could do a nollie flip here and there. It's true. Really, that's crazy. Well, because nice. they have the nice hinge on it, they actually pop. Whoever made those knew what they were doing. Right, because they put them where like the trucks would be, so it all makes it's all like yeah, I fully like a real board. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, yeah. where, do you, where do you guys see things going? Are things going well? Is the company going well? Are you liking it? Do you feel good? Of, I mean, I got a bunch of questions. Yeah, it's, 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 well, I'll say that it's staying afloat and I'll say it's, it's tough to stay afloat because you, no, need, to, you need to do it every single year, you know, which, uh, the same, the same, if not more amount of work you need to put in every single year. So it, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, the fact that it's uh, not terribly crumbling apart, I will say, is that's it's success. doing well. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. That's success yeah. in itself. Right. That's so cool. I think it's had a steady rise, and I think that, uh, yeah, it's doing, I'll say it's doing as uh, better than it's ever been doing, but... Um, It'd probably be, we'd probably be in better shape if we didn't waste most of the money on this studio, honestly. That's true. We just put so much money into the studio. I wish that we could make more video content, truly. Yeah. But it's, Do you it's, like the, the, it's like really the tough. making it? Yeah. Yeah, it's really tough. I'm not going to lie it, to you. And it gets I mean, harder and harder every video. So. Well, here's the thing. It's because, it's, I mean, you live somewhere where, I mean, seasons are always for, I mean, in Colorado, a lot of those video parts would have been done so much sooner, but we're just indoors going, I hope it stops snowing this week, you know? Yeah. yeah, I mean we we have we have a very uh, a small percentage of the year that's actually skatable out here, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Are you guys at all? Do you have in any version like able to take trips? Do you do you put any time into that, or is it kind of far fetched in the scenario? Uh, well, we got the van and we plan on going on tour, but the the problem with the team is that we're all blue collar gentlemen. Everyone's yeah. got full time jobs. They're yeah. all working schlubs. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny. My brother has a, a awesome brand. He's been making the boards from scratch, which is cool. He like actually presses boards now. But he started lunch break skateboards, and that's the exact theme of it: lunch break, like skate on your lunch break. Mm-hmm. You you have to be a dad. You don't have time for this, but you're gonna do it anyway. So, so. I want to. Yeah. So I want to plan a tour, but I need everyone to coincide getting their vacation time perfectly. Sure. And planning all of that, right? And also the, all, all these, you know, just the 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 state of everything. The last like almost, you know, you know, year and a half, two years. Or oh, whatever totally. It's, been, it's, been it's just like, yeah, it's, it's just been, been a wash, night. you know. So, but I'd love to come out to California now. Now that we're fucking famous, mm-hmm. oh, I'd love to come out to California. Now. Oh my god! Because <laughs> last what time I was out there, we were we were nobodies, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and now we're we're. Now we're fucking famous. We're, we are. I mean, we're buddies. We were nobodies. Now we're buddies. Yeah. Ow. Yeah. So Ooh, we'll have to make it out there soon enough. Hey, well, well, yeah. If you do, please, I will. I mean, figure out how to help you somehow. Any. You're in L.A., right? Of course. I'm I mean, actually I'm just in guessing. Burbank. Yeah, I'm in Burbank, which is like the calm where the old people are kind of. In fact. In um, Edward Scissorhands, the town that he's trying to mock or, or kind of like the mm-hmm. cookie cutter area is, is, is so Burbank. Scary. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's very calm here. Lots of parking. So what a beautiful nice. film. Oh, yeah. I love Tim Burton. Yeah, I'm actually jonesing to play a character like that, like oh, with man, that level so of good. weirdness, you know? Oh, right. yeah. I would love that so much. Sort of mute guy that doesn't talk at all. Yeah, he's got maybe scissors. I don't know. Maybe I'll change it. Isn't that funny, by the way, the like creativity of that situation when you think about what it is? You're like, well, th- there's probably a different version. You're like, nope, he's got scissors for hands, and it's yeah. a perfect example. Like, you yeah. can't 
It must have been a great pitch, honestly, to the <laughs> studios being like, got this movie called Edward Scissorhands. They're like, uh, can we change the character? Out? No, you're like, did you hear the name of the fucking movie? Is yeah. it's called Edward Scissorhands? Well, what's funny is you know he got like not kicked out of Disney, but they were like, yeah, dude, you're just like not gonna, not gonna, not gonna, not gonna work this time, basically. And it was all those years later that he went off and did everything that he then went back. And Disney was the one who were like, hey, can we actually make Frank Frankenweenie? He yeah. pitched Frankenweenie when he was at Disney, and they were like, uh, right. no. Like, nope. And then they came to him later to be like, no, we'll, we'll make that movie for you. And he was like, oh, the tables are done. Yeah, <laughs> no, like, you gotta had, love it. I'm sure the I told you so was pretty funny on that one. You know, up the punks. This is what I'm saying, you know. Mm-hmm. It's when, yeah, it's when the freaks, it's when the freaks rise, you know, that something beautiful comes out of it. You know, the freaks come out at night. And that they do. I, it's more that, but I think it's the, when you really got something, it's when there's a graciousness that comes with being right about it later on, you know, mm-hmm. really, yeah. because I like for many, many years, and this is going to, you never know from outside perspective, but for me, for many years, I felt underappreciated. Like, wow, I, you know, like you see the level of things that exist and then you make something and you can't help but kind of like on the plane of quality control, you go, well, I feel like the thing that I made is kind of like on this level that's so weird that nobody cares like just it feels under underrated and under kind of like undersold maybe and dude this new spider-man movie coming out and i will try not to ruin it for you but please don't the i really will try it though um (laughs) the level of people it's all about in that movie it's about the multiverse it's about basically more than one spider-man and all of a sudden, people being okay with that, being like, yeah, it's cool that Spider-Man exists um, in different arenas and that we all have our version of it. The, the amount of love I've gotten from people that you're kind of like, oh, well, people, you're, if you're in a movie, people will just hit you up on Instagram and say, you're awesome, right? right. People just it's like blanket. Yeah, sure, you're in a movie. You must be cool. People will, from this movie, like literally going, all right, so... Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man didn't really make sense. He was too emo. And in this movie, the way he finishes out the storyline and how he represents himself is like not confident and just like, Hey man, like girlfriend died. And now I don't pull my punches anymore. And like, I'm not a good person. And he's talking to the, like the Spider-Man now. And he's like, dude, you need to like try and pull your life together. Don't be that guy. You know, like don't, don't do what I did. And he represents himself so well, ends up finishing his storyline by saving somebody that he goes from last place emo Spider-Man to, I kid you not, everyone's favorite. They're like, he's the best. He is right. the best Spider-Man. And because he's the best Spider-Man, I saw all those movies. And, like, I saw all the stunts. I saw all the skateboarding, everything that you did, William Yu. And this is the year I started following you. And this is why I started skateboarding. And these are the other clips I've seen of you. You're awesome. And I my Instagram, like, inbox, I don't know if you know, but it goes to 99 plus. That's what it says when it's full. Yeah. I can go in there for two hours and thank people. Think, congratulations on No Way Home. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Thank you so much. You're awesome. For two hours. And I'll click out of there and be like, dude, I got to go to bed. And it will say 99 plus. And I've yeah. been doing it for weeks. And because somehow with the multiverse of like more than one Spider-Man, now being a stuntman of Spider-Man, it's okay to be a stuntman of Spider-Man and have your own people that like you. It is so crazy. Well, like, I mean that that's like like it's Sony's best film that they've ever had. Uh like it's insane the amount of, of yeah reception it's been. And I think that's a, a culmination of a, a lot of things, be it like obviously you know, no no doubt the pandemic that people can't go see anything at all. Sure, but sure. you you take like two decades worth of, you know, Spider Man fans and cram them all into one, then obviously it's fucking well. And but not not only love it totally, but not only did they do that, but they made a movie that was deeply sincere. That's the thing. It wasn't people. Right, it's, not, it's not just. It's not just. Uh, just like fan service. You know, it's not just like all right. Here's a bunch of shit you like. You know, I, I couldn't like, believe it. You know, because in game and whatever the you know how they're like everybody's cool and they stand there awesome. This movie, yeah. everybody's crying and you're like, this is just sad and these poor people. I couldn't believe that that the, the the cap off to what you missed is that 
I feel a lot of appreciation from people for those movies that I did that is filtered into the skateboarding too and who I am outside of that. The amount of love that I've gotten from this movie is entirely nuts. Like all yeah. the underappreciation for the years within skateboarding and people being like, I don't know, you're weird. I'm not sure I like you. Who cares? We do like you. We just don't want to tell anyone in case they don't like you, right? The like guilty pleasure version. Like you're awesome. I mean, but if anyone mm-hmm. asks, I don't know you, but by myself, I definitely like you, right? Whatever that yeah. was, people now are like, you're awesome. And I'll be like, well, thanks. I'm sure you enjoyed the movie. I'm the stuntman. Because they, they saw the photo. I basically did the stunt version of catching, you know, like when he saves this lady in the movie, I do the, mm-hmm. so there's a photo that got leaked of me doing whatever. And that culmination of that, people will specifically be like, I like you for this. You're awesome. And more than anything, the fact that I answer people online on Instagram, that has become the biggest thing. They're like, my God, you answered me. Also, you're polite. Also, you're nice. Like they're shocked. Like the amount of people to be like, you just made my day. And I'm like, that was it. I had to click a couple of buttons. Let's yeah. do this. Yeah. Like, let's freaking do this. Like you guys, like people don't understand. Those are going to be the people when I go, Hey, you guys, I'm about to make an indie movie. I need some help. Those are the people that give you their money and want to see the movie. That is right. so powerful. I'm like, freaking give me some fans. I'm about to thank everybody. Let's do this. You know? And I just don't think that resonates with everybody who does something that people can be a fan of people don't mm-hmm. realize how important that is the like circularness of giving back i really don't i, yeah. I can't believe it well yeah. tom like i've been saying our efforts have been wasted in skateboarding so we're just gonna have to become stuntmen i know that's what i was thinking you know yeah. what's hilarious is it is an adventure boys i'm not kidding the amount of times i'm like my god i have a musket and it's 1847 today it's so crazy <laughs> It's so crazy. I've been like upside down, like blood spurting out of my, just getting attacked by werewolves. And I'm like, this is Tuesday to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're living the dream, you know, and you should love every second of it. Ah, uh, the living the dream statement. But yes, in some way I am. You're right. Yes. Who, who's fucking, whose sick fucking dream is this? <laughs> what sick, what, what well, sick I just person came know, up with this I dream? Really, I really do want to know though, the internal and external of everything. Cause at like externally, like you guys, company to me, looks like you guys are freaking on it and you're doing a great job and things are stacking up and things are building in the way that they should. And I know internally you're always like, we're trying to have these walls not fall down. And I feel like everyone feels like that. And it's always hard to be gracious and not want to tell people it's falling apart to like not crush their fandom or what they feel about you, but at the same time being realistic for yourself and everyone else. So people don't have unrealistic standards for themselves. So people aren't unhappy when they're not you or they think they want to be you, you know? And that's the tricky, that's the tricky part of representing who you really are and what you're really doing as opposed to the fake, like we're all, it's all rich over here, you know? No, I mean, we've, we've been very honest with the, uh, the, you know, fans, especially the podcast where, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, they but all know that they all know this is a real studio. Exactly. But it's the assumptions that people make that you cannot control that I it's interesting to try and get ahead of. That's all, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I no. I mean, people's people's perspective. There's definitely more money that they think is in the industry than they're actually always. Is. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, when you break it down, it's just like. I don't even know how those bigger companies are like paying right? their riders so much. Like, I'm just like, if you're making like 10 bucks a board, how many fucking boards are you selling? Yeah. You know? And yeah. who are you selling them to? You're That's not what bam. I'm saying. You're not bam. Come on. Yeah, I know. So unless you are, unless you are, unless you are, unless you are, Which I case, am. We're, so- we're sorry, Mr. Bam. Yeah. That's our bad. But He's I, awesome. I can't believe what a success that was. Anyway, I'm sure he feels differently, but you know. But but yeah, as you know, as as the uh, the curtain starts to open, you know, and you see the Wizard of Oz, the more and more you get into the skate industry, it's just um, yeah. There's no other reason to do it besides they love it, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it is. I've always said it borders right on a religion. Borders right on it. You give all your money to it, yeah. right? Even what you wear and how you, I'm like, it's slightly religious because you're giving more than you're getting for sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the love of skateboarding. But I also too, 
I've never like in the last, like I could have been on a bunch of movies or done whatever. And I still feel twice as good about making a video part, producing it myself. Like I feel when I go to like now, if I'm like, all right, I'm going to make a short film. I'm like, oh my God, I don't have to go here 14 days for the same, the same footage. This is easy and everything's easy. So skateboarding does prepare you in that way for other things feeling simple. And that's cool, you know, yeah. for the upside to the downside, you know. So. And I will say a lot, a lot more when, um, you know, now more than ever, shops are way more just receptive to carrying fancy lad. Like it was, it was like pulling teeth at the beginning. Oh, I it was like, it was bet. like, Anything it was like no, we're, we're not taking a new brand. No one's ever heard of you. And like, no one really thinks there's like really value in what you guys are even doing. So, yeah. and it was like, um, yeah, it was like really tough, but I mean, now it's like at a point where, you know, more often than not, you know, shops are, are down to carry it. Um, yeah, so that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I do, and you know what else too, I was going to tell you, I don't know how you gentlemen feel, but even Thrasher's titling on the videos is getting better is a more sur- like a supportive titling too. Yeah. Know? Instead of being like, oh, so bad, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Get, I get, do, get, you know. That's for me, for you, for you guys from the outside. I was like, there we go. That's now we're building momentum towards what you want to like, what you want to be, you know, because they're and people have to realize at some point that skateboarding, like you can do a bunch of 50 stair handrails, but it don't make people feel stuff. Go ahead. It doesn't make you feel something. Yeah. Well, they, 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 they think they're the gatekeepers of, uh, of what skateboarding is and that, that actually doesn't exist. And when they, when they figure that out, it'll be a, a sad time for them. Yes, it will. And then the, hopefully the upside of that, though, and the is, upside might be a good, might be a good time. Well, for only them. because creativity ends up in the end, creativity always ends up winning because humans, our whole lives are about problems and problem solving. Creativity is problem solving. And at the end of the day, when you realize going faster down a handrail and you're like, Hey dude, we just don't need to do more because it now it takes about six or eight seconds for me to get down where we kind of just know where it's heading that at some point people's like, if you watch TikTok, how quick editing is right. People right. are like, I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm bored. That creativity, it's some, it would all filter back into people being bored by how fast you're going. And it's all the same thing that at some point creativity will take it over no matter what people think. So that's also cool. You know, there's a yeah. singularity to that which is exciting. Yeah, if it's a if it's a 40 stair handrail and I see you lock into a 50 at the beginning, I'm pretty sure I wonder what it, will happen. I do yeah. wonder what will happen. Do you? Do you? <laughs> yeah. So, no, it's cool. And here's the thing is for the guy who's doing that, it's the same guy that's like like bull riding. It's terrifying and it's awesome that you did it, but at the end of the day, we also know you either stay on the bull or you get off the bull. There's not a third option where you float into the air, right? There's not a third right. one where you which bowls or something that would be cool. No, it's just that. So yeah, it's cool. The impressiveness per the, like what it makes your imagination do at some point, people's imagination are going to take, that's why people keep making cooler and cooler CG. And it doesn't just stay with what it is. So mm-hmm. I think creativity will always overtake. I think so too. I think that there is a tough aspect though, behind making money in skateboarding and mm-hmm. keeping one's integrity that doesn't like, match up because even with matt Tomasello all the time we're like matt you could probably end up making some money off skateboarding if you try to like play the game a little bit and he's like no nah, i don't want to do that yeah, rather, you won't do i would it. rather keep my dignity my, i don't want to try to like you know uh feel like i'm you know selling out or anything like that and and what and what version to him do you think it is selling out like how far could he go without selling out do you think like in his mind from his perspective you know, he doesn't want to step out of his comfort zone, really. He doesn't want to have to talk in a video. He doesn't want to have to get on a tour bus with a bunch of people that he doesn't know. How is he talking on camera? He's terrible. Is he really? <laughs> yeah. That's, oh, yeah, that's he's hard. Is he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, he's yeah. really bad. Oh, yeah. But But if you get him when he doesn't realize he's being filmed, it's gold. I mean, right. he, says, so, he so, says some of the funniest, some of the funniest shit. So yeah, as yeah. in... So as in he's comfortable in an actual conversation, it's just being on film. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. It's just as soon as as soon as he realizes the camera's filming, it's like, 
I think with that, at least he knows that that's something that he doesn't want to do. Like, he's literally like, no, I just don't want to. Where me, I was like, well, I don't want to like, I don't want to do something obnoxious, but I'm also so insecure. I wouldn't talk on camera anyway, even if I did want it. And so I was too much like in between where I think it's cool that he literally knows what he doesn't want to do and is totally fine with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, he's totally like, I would rather be like a Heath Kircher character, not talk at all. Yeah. Just leave it all up to mystery. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing. I think that's a nice, uh, if that's the type of person you are, I mean, that is the strongest move, you know? And for me, for many years, I was kind of like, yeah, I'll just be, I'll just hopefully people will just hand me stuff because I did a good job and the skateboarding is cool and they like it. And then in my industry, people are like, no, no, you have to be good at skateboarding or whatever you're doing. And you have to be good at telling me that you are. And then you have to sell me on it. And then you have to convince me. And then I might give you some money for it. And you're like, that's a lot more than just being on film. They're like, that's right. And you're like, cool. (laughs) Yeah. You know, exactly. (laughs) But I think that's awesome that he knows that, that his awareness towards making what he's made speaks for itself so that he doesn't have to worry about that, you know? And I wish I had more of that in me to let what I've done speak for itself, you know, but I have a lot of what I am and want is about, it never not that it's never good enough but my imagination is always like but you know what should happen now right and so i'm never like i did it it was great the tunnel toss like i have a new kind of tunnel toss in my new video part mm-hmm. and racking my brain as to make something that i actually liked you know that took so much time you know yeah but i think that's cool and you know what if you ever uh if you ever speak to him about it the one question i always had for tomasello is this is do you think he heavily from taking things apart all day his mechanical knowledge is so high that making skateboards that do that is much more second nature right because if you if you've ever seen i've done a bunch of things where i've been like all right i'll make this skateboard that does this swivel thing or i'll make this other skateboard but if you watch what i do is very elementary in that sense but i also have never for a job or otherwise taken small parts of anything apart electronically or known the mechanisms to like right of the actual i don't have that knowledge and so i always i always felt like yeah he seems like a guy who takes stuff apart all day and realizes like in a tactile sense with actual parts you know how to put together that he has a working knowledge of that and that's why that comes together better than the guy that's like i know i'll get some springs you're like yeah Yeah. a bunch of springs yeah well we've always we've always said that with like compared like matt matt's manips to like uh abe orange man dubin's manips where sure and by the way he it, still, Orange Man has some in, some interesting ones conceptually that I'm always like. Oh, oh no, you know, Orange Man has some great stuff, but Orange Man builds something like based off of like an idea in his head, and then it's most of the time just going to break right in front of you. Matt's it is got, gonna, yeah, yeah. Matt's well, got much like more the, of like a. No, you go ahead. No, no, I'm just gonna say he is more of like a a Pee Wee Herman style. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Which is like he and I have actually talked about like a kid show situation, you know, right? A little bit with that, but he really is. My point is, is to back you up. Yes, he is more that style, and Tomasello is more like, oh, yeah, he's like he's more scientific with it. He's more of like an engineer with it. But uh, yeah. I mean, he was guy, a PC technician. Yeah, I was gonna say so the guy used to work. With, the guy uh, used to work for Dell for years. So yeah. I don't know if you knew that, but I, I figured I, that's it, that's where you're I, going putting together those pieces. That's what it felt well to me because I can tell from a distance many like how things are done pretty quickly right mm-hmm. i just i don't know why but i just have an eye for that and i was like because there are many times i was like oh i'll make a i'll make a skateboard that does this or does that and be, because i don't have a good working knowledge of that stuff it doesn't end up if it, if i can do it it takes twice as long as it's worth you know yeah, and i feel like right. him if, and I'm not saying, by the way, there's not an obsession involved with like, oh, this took 16 nights at my place and it was just fun. Like, I'm sure there's a version of that for him. But for me, I don't have enough working knowledge to smoothly make that make that work for myself. You know, yeah. like I don't like mine's more if you watch with my creativity, it's a lot more like if you taught a monkey to skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he's taken to the next level and you know, it's uh it's the same brand of everybody um such as yourself, you were saying it earlier, um, that I love to see where you you just kind of know who you are and you're just like, How far can I push this idea mm-hmm. of of myself? You know? Totally. No, and it's 
it's so refreshing because there is so many, you know, there's so many versions of like trampoline tricks. And even the, that's another thing too, that I think he and Richie are on an interesting path that is not where I'm at. Cause I'm a lot more avant-garde than that, where I'm like today, you know, today there's a skateboard involved or maybe there's not, I don't know where if you watch that trick, you know, the trick where Tomasello puts the trampoline between the, basically the two, the two raised up platforms or whatever, and bounces the skateboard back to his feet to make it all the way up. There's a yep. certain version of that, that even if you're like anyone, even if you're Kerchart, you're like, dear God, like I did, I, you, that is a skateboarding because his feet did not leave the ground and yep. he in fact did the thing. He, and Richie is really good at that. Richie will sell you skateboarding in a way that you're like, hey, his feet were on the skateboard the whole time. I mean, he's yeah. not, he's not kooking it by doing the whatever. He did follow all the rules. Do you that, think that's where you fall short? Is that that's where you touch the lava? The, yeah, the ancient yeah. rule of skateboarding: don't touch the lava. Here's the thing: is I there was a part, there was some part of my creative existence that I really people made me feel so bad about it that I, that I was serious. I was like, wow, I blew it. I'm ruining, I'm single-handedly ruining skateboard, which by the way, sounds self-involved when you say it out loud, which I don't mean. Um, <laughs> but really I was like, yeah, I like, I'm not as good because my feet were always touching and neat. But if you watch a lot of those tricks, the reason why I say that is the reaction by many regular skateboarders, a lot of the Tomasello tricks, because he's following the rules of feet not right. touch the ground exactly yeah their relatability their true relatability of the mechanics of how they how hard skateboarding real skateboarders know is they can mm-hmm. relate to that better than you if you see me go i don't know i threw the skateboard and i felt like it i did a flip they're yeah. just there's not enough skateboard true skateboard physics involved with it for people to enjoy it as much that a regular skate everybody else somebody's grandma on the couch she's in she's into my skateboarding which yeah no like me now with no pride whatsoever and just happiness towards anyone caring. I'm like, love you, grandma. Keep, keep on watching. I love you. Yeah. You know, but the true skateboarder, that's why a lot of those comments on Thomas Sello's stuff that people go creativity. Ah, oh, it's not skateboarding. Ever. He's, he's sticking so close to the rules and then also making the skateboard flip by itself that people are like, you're good. You are yeah. good. You, you did the thing because he knows exactly what skateboarding is augments it in the way that he feels like, and does it in a way that's cleanly done that people are going you confuse me sir and you're like good because skateboarding is far too regular sometimes yeah yeah uh, i mean as far as like uh your skateboarding or mine you know it's really easy for somebody watching it to be like oh anyone could not i mean probably hey, more no, so dude, mine than me, yours that but, what, but people say all the time they're like oh anyone can do that and totally. it's like that's so not true yeah. go ahead and try it and see for yourself well not only that but the the better part of it is what they don't know is the charisma that goes with it you're like i just made that look like fred astaire you make it look like that with a skateboard in an alleyway i will see you there (laughs) right exactly i will see you there please make it beautiful it's concrete and some wheels on some wood please make it look that good i dare you i dare you to take the time yeah i know you're preaching to the choir so I think, but my point is, I think that's a really cool um, direction that he's taken it that I myself am like, yeah, I start taking apart computers and I could make something like that, but I can't, I do not have that knowledge. And I think it's really cool that whoever is doing the skateboarding brings what they have in their back pocket and it's like shows up like that. And I think that's really cool. You know, I think Absol- that's really cool. Absolutely. He's yeah. a tech wizard in more ways than one. Well, yeah. William, like I said, it's been an honor and privilege having you on the podcast. Well, you know, yeah, long time, the- long time coming. You know, it's been mm-hmm. five years since I asked you for the asked you for that friend trick for his skateboarding. Yeah, and by the way, I wanted to thank you for that. I um, that was I in the moment there was still a bit of insecurity in the process that I was doing of of where I was filming at that point, and later on three years after that i was like my god that was actually really cool that they asked for that like i wish i had better tricks to give them you know like i just i i don't know why but i post appreciated it i was like that is so cool they asked me you know because i just i think i was just having such a hard time with certain things that i was trying to create that i couldn't appreciate it and i didn't know where to to kind of put it in my mind but i think it's really obviously really cool you know and if you ever do not that you will but if you ever ask for some more tricks, I um, 
Oh, he's got him. I hey, would like. To. Yeah, uh, he's got him. Hey, good to know. You yeah, know? I would def. I would. Lo- I would love to because I. I love making something with a reason. You know. Yeah, that that one came at a perfect time though because you know we were just in shock that people were actually receptive to what we were doing and then, uh, you know, people are still are like, yeah, that's that's the best fans of that video. So it's good to know that we peaked. You know. <laughs> Dude, you know, it's funny. People always no. I know you're saying that laughing, but I actually have always wanted to peak. Oh, I have because thinking about it, like yeah. always trying to be better, always trying to be good. And then yeah. you're like, wow, I'm just terrible that I can't even peak. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That I was like, I'm trying to make a video part that peaks. Well, yeah, oh my you, God, I would love to have it. Right. You can't make your definitive moment. Yeah. Then I'm like, please let me peak. So in a, I mean, obviously that's a, interesting shift in perspective but i've always like you know wanted that but i i think i mean i've been aware for a long time and just kind of watching and going good like good job unifying something in a way that people can't knock down you know because little individuals me and richie and certain people coming along it changes things for a while and then people kind of give it the credit away to the internet and people do who don't understand skateboarding liking it but Mm -hmm. You guys were unifying it in a way that it was branding it where at first I was kind of like, well, I'll soon be forgotten. And you know what? For good reason. These guys are doing it in a forceful way that is like it needs that branding or else everyone's like, I don't remember. There's a guy on the Internet. I don't remember. He had a shirt on. It was cool. I saw it. Now it's over. So I was always really proud of that for you guys. You know, I was always that's cool that you had that for that forethought to do it and then also the self-confidence to do it because a lot of when I was making stuff early on, I was like, oh, if you don't want to watch it, you know what? I'll just actually put it away for you, you yeah. know? So yeah, there's something to be said for keeping people's interest and then and then pushing it because it's only going to, people are only going to realize more that that's what's next, period. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, not even a, it's just what's next. Yeah. At first it was because we were, you know, we all had low self-esteem and considered ourselves a bunch of nobodies that uh, we were like, well, but if we're all together and it's one big group of us all doing it, then... we can just blow it at the same time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then we all failed together. Yeah, no, there is, it's hilarious. It is cool to have, I'm serious. That helps a lot. Sometimes, yeah. you know, I've, I, and not to be overly dramatic, but I have felt alone for a lot of years. Yeah. No, I, for what I make, I just feel alone, which is fine. I mean, you choose it, so it is what it is. But I believe it, and you know, if I didn't have like uh, you know, this tight knit group of friends, you know, I would feel the same way. Uh, I just, yeah, I mean, we're kind of lucky enough to have all met at the uh, Coliseum and just happened to uh, a lot of luck, you know, right place, right time, really, just, yeah, wow. and just uh, just continue it, just based off the love of it just to not be able to stop doing it you know and just yeah the at not really caring while you're doing it just you just just for the joy of doing it you know yeah so it's freaking awesome man yeah all right well come visit california oh yeah oh we will no, we'll be there but, we'll, we'll but, be in the we'll be in the next spider-man we'll i'll be there with bells on I dude, it is so crazy. I used to be so even with my parents visiting set, it was it wasn't until the second movie where I was like me like the main guy that I would even like let them come around. And me now, you know, you get like you get a little bit older and you realize how precious that that stuff is that you're like, I'll be 60 soon. You're like, let's do this. I'm serious. Let's go to set now. Like I'm so much different now just to see what you can get away with, you know, because life's so short, dude. You get hit by a bus tomorrow. You yeah, know? that's true. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go hit up craft services. We'll eat all the good snacks, and then we'll go hit get hit by a bus. You know, I'm yeah, I'm serious though. They got plenty of snacks. That's one thing yeah. I do know. Yeah, that's gonna be the movie that we make visiting you on the Spider Man set. That's not a bad movie, honestly. Honestly, not a bad movie. And then Big Zo gets bit by a radioactive stunt man. Yeah. So damn, and like you kind of have some powers, but it's mostly just getting hit by stuff. Yeah, and, and like go, making it look good. Hit, yeah, making it look okay. Like, and yeah. then I become the next Matt Schlager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Not bad. All right, we're gonna have to take this to the writing room table. Yeah, this is pretty good. We're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna put this put this aside for now. Mm-hmm. We'll put revisit. a pin in it. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love it. But yeah, like I said. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. 
Thanks for having me. And I, I, you know, you always do that where people are like, well, if they wanted me to do it, they would ask me, you know, and people get prideful about stuff that I'm like, not me. I want to be on there. I think it's gonna be awesome. I don't care. I'll text them right now. Well, usually we feel kind of bad about asking people, you know, Do you? it's like, well, I mean, not necessarily bad, but it's like, oh, I guess we should. We want to ask this person. There's we should ask him. You oh, know? kind of like asking him to dance type of a deal. The old kind of like asking him to dance. You know, you walk up to him with like your shoulders up and you're like, hey, uh, you seem nice. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, dancing's stupid, but I don't know. It'd be kind of funny if like you and I went out on the floor. That's and just true. Dance. I mean, people would think because it's dumb. I mean, it's dumb. It's dumb that people are dancing, but it's, I, mean, I don't <laughs> like it either. I don't like it, but it, it'd be funny if you and I just went and did it for like a few minutes, right? And everyone would be watching. and It'd be, it'd be funny. They'll all laugh at us. They'll think it's funny. It'll be, they'll be come back here and maybe make out. What'd you say? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Well, yeah. tell, tell Richie. What's in your pocket? Nothing. Well, tell Richie that we said hi. And, uh, you know, I guess I'll just, uh, Legs wanted to know uh, every person that comes on what their Taco Bell order was. I don't know what that what the deal with that is, but that's awesome. Um, so here's the thing: the only time I ever go to Taco Bell is with Richie to get him food. I don't. Wow. I, yeah, my stomach uh, doesn't really do well. Like I, in the last few years, my dad died, and so my stomach just went oh down downhill from that. Um, so I don't ever go there. But for Richie, I will at nighttime. And he, if he can, he will eat Mexican food or burritos or tacos every day of the week. Every day of the week. So there's his order. I My order is not have my stomach hurt order. Taco Bell. That's a pretty, that's a classic order. It's a not end up in the bathroom order right there. Could I get one uh, no tummy ache with a medium Baja blast, please? Yeah, right. the drinks are sick, though. I'm into that Baja yeah, Blast. The drinks are good. Not Baja Blast. All right, great. well, we're going to have to end this because Tom is going to have a, quite a field day editing this. Oh, you know, my so. God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Tom. Sorry. Hey, Tom. no, it's okay. Hey, what, what can you do? Yeah. But, um, yeah, hey. Gentlemen. Until, until we see you next time. Yeah, I like it. And let us know when your part comes out. Hey, so I really will. I'm trying to meet with the guy tomorrow about the song. I don't know how quickly he can have, actually craft that puppy, but one last thing. This is going to be so short, but you know, Joe, Joe Hammocky and I went out shooting the last like three years of my part. We shot a bunch of stuff, and I don't know if you know, but he ended up passing away from a. He had stage four cancer and then had a heart attack on the meds, and this no. super unfortunate. And he was so awesome, dude. Bet like yeah. he was a staff photographer, you know, for Thrash or whatever. But no, he lived. I know the there. name, yeah. Yeah, he's such a, we actually just went to his uh, funeral. They finally had a service for him the other day, but he shot all this stuff to go with my part. And so we're trying to kind of line everything up with Burnett going and, you know, going and seeing it and getting to get a hold of, you know, what he shot and then kind of syncing up with the part and everything. So hopefully it won't, it won't take, take too long, but yeah. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah. It'd be cool to obviously dedicate it to him if, if there's something to go in the magazine from it. So, right. Yeah. Be awesome. All right, gentlemen, I will let you go. All right. Keep up the great work. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, and when I do release the part or whatever, if for any reason you like it and want to talk about it, let's talk about it. I was going to say, maybe when you, when we have, when your part comes out, if you want to come back on for a little part recap, you know, I would, yeah, if you're, if you like it, I would uh, obviously no offense if you don't or whatever, but if you do like it, let me know. Mm-hmm. Well, either we'll like it, we'll hit you up, or we'll oh, we won't like it, and you'll you'll that'll never hear from us again. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. are gonna be like smirking. You're like, hey, you're man, like, yeah. good job. You sure did do something. <laughs> now, if we don't like it, we'll still have you on anyway, just to tell yeah, you what just we to, didn't like about it. Yeah, dude, can you imagine just the like <laughs> the roast? Just All the right, so, what was up with that fucking shitty ass part you released? Trick by trick, too. All right, trick three. So here you are in an alley. Cool outfit. It'll be great. It'll be great. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you again. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, have a good night. Tell us, Spider-Man, we said hi. Mm -hmm. I will. will. All right, (laughs) boys. Later. Oh, my God. That was so great talking to William Spencer. You know, that was really great. Yeah. It was nice to talk to him. I know. Old Bill Spencer. Old Billy Spencer. Nice guy. Mm Mm-hmm. Spider-Man.
Mm -hmm. Not Indiana Jones. No. Not Batman. No. But Bob Crane. That's Scarecrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you just got to respect somebody like that. (laughs) You know, coming from the same, you know, same, same rooted place that we are. But, you know, just... Ah, just accomplishing so much more when he was talking about all that all that sweet, sweet money he made. God, that sweet, sweet money. Ah, man, when he mentioned that sweet, sweet money, I was like, hmm, interesting. There's something about sweet, sweet money that really gets me going. Yeah. And I don't know what it is. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not one for guessing. No. But you know what? I feel like we got to end this. We it's true. Go. It's true. I mean, needless to say, I'm going to be dreaming about breaks. Mm-hmm. No, obviously. I'm going to be dreaming about sweet, sweet money. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be dreaming about those sweet, sweet tree frogs as to- toothbrushes. So those are three different podcasts right there. Yeah. Oh, man. That's some good podcast. All right. Well. You got anything you want to say to the listeners? Keep on rocking in a free world. Oh, I thought we had a different one. Well, you know, this. I'm going to keep it that because, you know, the whole Neil Young. Because Neil's Joe off Rogan Spotify thing. now, yeah. so we got him back. We we gotta we gotta keep it true to Neil. Oh, that's my bad. Let's get one more clean take. You got anything for the listeners that you would like to say? Keep on rocking in a free world. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah.